What's cracking the show? I'm boy, Mr. Criminal, and I want to present our sponsors of the week. That's right. The Bonnie and Clyde Show and Mr. Criminal on air live are sponsored by Illegal Image Clothing. That's right. You can check them out at www.illegalimageclothing.com. And then we got my homeboy that's getting everybody ready for the summertime, getting yoked up, getting all proper and stuff. JB underscore fitness. That's right. JB underscore FTNS on Instagram. You can check him out. Follow him. Get your resumes right. And then we got my brother punching back in L.A. County. His name is Attorney Rosenberg. That's right. Follow him at Attorney Rosenberg on Instagram. And you guys can follow him. He's punching back. Defending Southern California. Then we got my people at L.A. Kush. Los Angeles Kush with some of that good. They came through with some of that blood walker. Some of that uh, OG. Julio G came through with it. I want to give you guys the props and shout outs. Matty Ice Fitness. My personal trainer. His baby girl. Mr. Criminal. We are trained by Matty Ice Fitness. Give him a follow. We're getting our regimens right. We're getting our nutrition in. We're getting our workouts crazier than ever. All because of Matty Ice. So I want to give a salute up to Rap Kings. That's right. Rap Kings underscore LV. If you guys want to get your walls, businesses wrapped, uh, vehicles, they do it all. So make sure you guys let them know that Mr. Criminal sent you. And last but not least, we got Trade Craft Farms. That's right. The homie Daniel Rodriguez of the USC pulled up this week and uh, tapped in with a bag of that Trade Craft. And we've been in touch. So I want to give a shout out to all our sponsors. Make sure you guys give them a follow. Make sure you guys show some love and support. This is Jimbo's foot. This is This is Goldie. I see you homies low riding on bullet the mother boulevards every weekend to this podcast, baby. We getting all the DMs, all the news, all the information, all the video clips. Much love to all the motorcycle clubs, all the low rider clubs, all the homies in the hood banging. That Mr. Criminal on air live, 15 million impressions in 30 days, man. I'm going to keep on banging that because that's impressive. It's amazing. We're killing the game. Shout out to everybody all over the world tapping in and subscribing to Mr. Criminal on air live. The most realest and liveest podcast on the motherfucking West Coast, baby. And critical. What's up, my boy? Man, we keep on doing this and we're running it up. Yeah, I've been having some interesting phone calls in the last few days, my boy. Talk to me. What you got? I got some very important people that are watching us now. Is that right? Some very, very high-level players, huh? Man, I got goosebumps right now. I'm talking people that could change people's lives in a serious way. Wow. And they're like, we like what you're doing. How could we assist what you guys are doing over there? How could we be a part of it? And I'm talking people that are uh, tapped into networks with billions of viewers. And I think life's about to change for this motherfucking <laughs> podcast very soon, homie. Let's go. And I'm very proud to say, though, that we holding up the flag proudly and still representing from the root of this shit. Straight for the culture, straight for our people, straight for our Hampton. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring somebody to the stage and to the table that I grew up listening to. And I can't say that I got many people that I give props to out here on the West Coast. I'm real uh, serious about my craft and my, and my flow. But the homie that's sitting here with me tonight is a motherfucking legend. Legend. One of my motherfucking favorite rappers of all time. The number one Chicano rapper to Mr. Criminal. And I said it to him in private. And now we're saying it publicly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mr. Criminal on air live. My motherfucking homie, Mr. Motherfucking Shadow. What's cracking, homie? What's up, my dog? Hey. We're here. The homie pulled up. And since I started the podcast, they've been asking since episode one, <laughs> when's Shadow going to be on the podcast? And I was like, you know what? That's a good question. I got to hit the homie. And as soon as I hit the homie, he said, let's do this. And he pulled up yeah. with his family. Happy Mother's Day to, to your family, to your to your wife, to my beautiful Thank wifey. You. It's a it's a beautiful week. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day. And we here. Critical. What's up, man? What's cracking, homie? I, 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 the hood TMZ. I mean, come on. <laughs> you got to run it up on us. Man. What do we got? Man. We're branding it out. What's All right, cracking? Man. U.S. to end Title 42 restrictions. Okay. You know what that means? I have no clue, but Shadow yeah, was kind of schooling me I know, a second hey, ago Shadow off camera. Shadow me too, bro. He, he was... let me know real quick that I was very behind on my news shit. <laughs> yeah. What's Same cracking? Either, what does that mean, homie? But, Shadow. Um, yeah, Shadow, what's up, man? Let's, let's go. <laughs> let him explain to us. I'm on my nerd shit, right? Nah, yeah. but... Uh, so people are flocking the borders, right? Because tonight, 
sometime between 7 and 9 p.m., I think, and that Title 42 expires. Oh, shit. So what that means is after they cross the border, they jump that fence. If they get hammed up, they get taken into custody, and then they get, they get released back into the U.S. streets oh, wow. Wow. until they get their case heard, and, you know, they do all the diligence and see if they can stay or not. And then they're going to claim, um, what's that shit called? Uh, Asi- um, asylum. Yeah, yeah, asylum. Yeah, asylum. So... They might stay, they might not, but they get that chance and they get to live that American life while they're waiting. So wow, and then I mean, you got people from all walks of life, dog. From I'm talking from Afghanistan, Mexico, Central America. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, a lot of people struggling out there. Yeah, you know, and they're so. trying to do everything. They're willing to put everything on the line to make it. I mean, that's a touchy subject for me because my father came over here like that, and. Uh, he went through a lot. He went all, he came all the way from, from the bottom and he lost his best friend on the way. <clears throat> and uh, that shit is something that I know for a fact if a lot of people didn't go through, if uh, first generation cats like us, they, our parents didn't go through that shit, we wouldn't be here. So imagine yeah. the next superstar that their bloodline is coming from that, those people right now. Imagine the next yeah. person that could be platinum tracks in the next three, four, five years. Who knows how long it is? Or the next doctor, lawyer, who knows? Yeah. Might be the next president of the United States. One day we might overturn the rules. You know what I'm saying? Like you just yes, never sir. know. Him. So I think it's a beautiful thing to see that these people are there, hungry, determined, ready to sacrifice anything and put it all on the line, homie. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about that, Critical? Yeah, man. I mean, um, you know, they're obviously they're 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 wanting to come over here for a reason. They want to start a, uh, uh, they want the opportunity that we have out here. So yeah. I'm I'm with that, man. You know, like you know, some of my my grandparents. My grandfather's from, from from Mexico, and he came out here, and we just recently had some issues with that. So, but we were able to figure all that out, and he's here, and he was able to build a, an amazing family, and that's one of the reasons I'm here. Man, so, powerful. I'm with it. Powerful. Yeah, I think I think we all went through that, dog. My yeah. mom and pops both crossed that river, hopped yeah. the fence. Yeah. You know, my mom crossed the border when she was nine months with me in her belly. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you oh, that's know, deep. It, it's it's it was. Uh, I got to give her her props because imagine a a nine-month pregnant lady, you know, hitting the cerros and crossing that river and dodging the migras and shit. That's crazy. So that's that's, that's deep, Holmes. Yeah, that's... And people don't know. People are quick to judge and see it on the news and have their opinion. Uh, A lot of people in in life, they're like, oh, they shouldn't be here. People say whatever. But you don't know until you walk through those people's shoes. You never know what they experience. You don't know what's waiting for them on the other side. You don't know when they turn around, when they go back, what they face just to get to that moment. It's like victory just to get to that wall. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad we got a loophole. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) In my opinion, shit, they they did something right for once. You know what I mean? That's right. That shit expires right now? Like in seven o'clock, like, nine o'clock, you said. I think seven or nine. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta we gotta uh, show some support, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever I can to help support the cause. We'll figure out something critical. We'll put something together and we'll give back, man. But yeah, man. At the end of the day, shit. We got we got Mr. Motherfucking Shadow in the building. I mean, what? What's up, Crit? Um, the outlets is showing over there. Which ones, big dog? Over the, the, I know you don't like that. So you want to move chair to cover the outlets? Um, it's showing bad, bad. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, Robert, push that over real quick, man. Yeah, Thank we, got, you. we got sign language. Shout out to whatever. <laughs> Y'all Thank like, you. Okay. You know what, what, what Am I supposed to no, drop no, my no. weapon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that way we can cut. Okay. Just a little bit over here. Is yeah, that code perfect. red? What, what, no, what, no, what no, is no, that? We're good, we're good. <laughs> there cool. we go. Perfect. Now, do me a favor. Scoot that light over so it's still lit up behind him. Yes, sir. Yeah, perfect. Awesome, you guys. <laughs> perfect. Thank All you. All right, yeah, we're back. So we'll get back to that intro. So we got my motherfucking homie, Mr. Motherfucking Shadow in the building. And yes, I sir. emphasize that with two capital Fs because I'm happy as hell, man. We, we are, Like I said, me and my homies, I grew up on that. And to, to, to tell it the real, to keep it 1,000, I'm going to always keep it real with my people. I wasn't really impressed with too much Chicano rap growing up. I was My homies used to bump it. And I was like in the Brother Lynch, Sibo, Spice One, like a lot of the underground rap. And the, the, one of the rappers that, that did stand out to me that didn't put out too much work was Frank Villa, proper those, but I didn't really like, I liked it, it was cool, but I didn't like, oh yeah, this is the shit shit, right? Right. And, but I give it his props. A little bit later, you know, I started hearing like the, the little ones, the little robs and shit like that. But when I heard Mr. Shadow, that was it. That's when I finally was like, okay, now we're cooking. Now we got someone out here that could spit. Now we got someone out here that could deliver lyrical, spit fast, uh, different cadences, different pockets. 
on original beats. Let's highlight this. A lot of cats were on, on, on like old school Jack beats a lot, and your album came in straight representing. Yeah. On your cover the, uh, of the cup, first cover, Michi Park rapping, Slingshot Pelon. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is someone in hip hop and rap, whatever you want to call it, that I could finally look at the cover and say, damn, this is someone that looks like me. And it was it was just hip hop and rap because back then when, when I dropped my shit and when you know Little One and Rob were out, there was no Chicano rap. There wasn't. There was, we didn't get labeled yet. So it was it was just, you know, rap. Raps. It was up. just rap. But once all the homies came out and there was too many to, you know, they 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 finally labeled us and gave us our own genre. You yeah. Know I mean? So and that's that's something powerful though, because you go into a record store, you got rap, gangster rap, you got Chicano rap. Yeah. So you know what I mean? I mean it's a it's a bittersweet situation with that. Yeah. You know, I think it's dope that 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 was the, the reality back then. But I think it's also dope that you didn't change up. Just yeah. because it was rap and you're like now be expected to be with the big boys and the, rapping with the, the big leagues, you yeah. still were shadow, homie. I mean, you still bald headed, khakied out, uh, slingshot. Uh, where did that come from, homie? Let's let's get all the way back to the soil of it, like how Mr. Shadow was born, where your love for hip hop grew, the first time you picked up a microphone, like let's break that shit down. Yeah, so the first time I actually wrote a rhyme, an actual rap, I was like nine, eight or nine years old. And this was when my pops took me to Disneyland for my birthday. It was just me and him because my mom had to work. And uh, it moved me so much that I wrote a rap about it at eight or nine years old. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, I just started listening to, you know, music that was on the radio. My mom would go to TJ and buy me cassettes of Houdini and, you know what I mean? I mean, Curtis Blow, Fat Boys, just shit that. I wasn't used to hearing, you know what I mean? She would just go and ask the guy, like, hey, you know, what you got for rap? And they would give her tapes, and I would listen to them. And I just liked the flow and the beats, and I liked the way they came out and shit. And I was like, man, I want to do that, you know? And I just kept on listening to stuff. And then your Easy es came out, your Snoops, your Dre's, you know? And then I was listening to my homeboy, Night Out, rest in peace. Man, rest in peace, Night Out, legend. Um, he was doing neighborhood raps for the neighborhood. And uh, when I heard that, and I went to see him do it one time at the homie's house, the DJ that was making his beats. I was like, I want to do that shit too. So then at, at the age of 13, I started fiddling with music. And then by the time I was 16, I was like, okay, I'm going to give it this shit a go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's when uh, on a Sunday I recorded Till I Die. I told I told Steve Vicious, hey, dog, I want to hear a remake of More Bounce to the Ounce that I've never heard before. Wow. VMF, right? Yes, sir. Shout out to VMF. Oh yeah. You know, he's a legend. His sound Straight is hard as hell. His sound is crazy, man. Yeah. And he, he's still doing it. And um, I just told him, I said, hey, bro, I need more bounce to the ounce like it's never been flipped before. And three days later, he gave me Till I Die, the instrumental. Wow. And that shit just brought out something in me that I didn't even know was in me. You feel me? Like, the way I wrote it, the way I flowed on it, the way I twisted on it, I, it just came. It so, birthed Shadow. That's it. That was it. That was it. And that song, I mean, I was on the radio station about about that same day. I recorded on a Sunday. After I recorded it, my homeboy Hitman drove me to Z90. And um, I knocked on the door. It was a Sunday. It was nobody there except the DJ. And he's like, oh, man, you can't. You got to come back Monday through Friday. It's closed. I'll get in trouble if I let you in. And you got to remember, dog, it's... He's gangstered out. I'm gangster the fuck out. And we're knocking on his door. He's like, oh, yeah. these fools are going to rob me. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, he basically, sh you know, shot us off and shot us away and was like, nah, I can't fuck with you right now. So we said, man, fuck it. All right. We were driving out the parking lot and there was a minivan with the fucking logo of the radio station pulling in. And at the time, I didn't know who she was, but it was Lisa Vasquez, which was the program director for C90. Damn. And my boy looked at me and I looked at him and we're like, yeah, fuck yeah. We we backed it up. We went to the fucking door, and she 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 jammed into the door, and we knocked, and she opened it, and I told her I said, hey man, I got this I got this record. I need you to hear, and she told me the same shit. Come back Monday through Friday, you know, blah blah blah. I was like, nah, man, this shit gotta be heard now. And she she goes, give me one second. She closed the door, came back, and she goes, I'm gonna give you one minute, in my office. Damn. So we walked in, <clears throat> excuse me, and she uh, she put it on, 
heard the first verse in the hook. And she, her back was turned to us. We were on her desk was right here. We were, you know, she played it. And we were fucking like, bump, you know, bobbing yeah. her heads. And she was, she was bobbing her head. And she paused it, and she was like, when she paused it, my heart stopped. I was like, oh fuck, she didn't like it because she didn't hear the whole song. It was just the first verse in the hook. You know what I mean? So when she turns around and said, who, who, who wrote this? Me. Who's rapping me? Me. Who made the beat? Steve Vicious. Is the whole song like this with no cuss words? And I didn't even realize I didn't cuss through the whole fucking song, bro. Damn. That shit, I'm telling you, dog, it was it was crazy the way it happened. It's perfect. Yeah, so I said, yeah. So she goes, okay, I'm going I'm to take you to the DJ booth right now. So before that, it was during commercial break. She goes, you have you have 30 seconds to call whoever you want and whoever you can and tell them you're going to be on the radio live after commercial. Damn. And she took me in there to the food head, just rejected me. And he's like, hey, what's your name again? I said, Shadow, that was my hood name. Shadow, this is him, man. And she told homeboy, hey, this is Shadow. Introduce him as San Diego's very own Mr. Shadow. She put the Mr. on me. Hell yeah. So I, I like the way it sounded. You know what I mean? It sounded it sounded like, you know, big boss shit. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to run with that shit, Mr. Shadow. And that's, when that, and that's when Mr. Shadow was born. Man, shout out to, <laughs> shout out, what was her name Lisa again? Lisa Vasquez. Yeah, shout out to Lisa Vasquez <laughs> for that shit, man. Yeah, she is the one responsible for Mr. Shadow. Wow. That's 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 legendary, homie, and from then, Z90. Yeah, and then, um, you know, they played the song after commercials. He introduced me to San Diego's very own Mr. Shadow, never heard before. And he played it. He had a dumbfound look on his face, like, How, what the fuck did you just do? How are you in here? I just told you no, and you're in here with the program director. Yeah. You know what I mean? I said, it was just destiny, my boy. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So he played the song. After commercial, all the lights lit up on the phone. Because, you know, at the station, they have the phone and shit, and it has all the little squares yeah. with all the different lines. They were lit up like Christmas. And he didn't know which one to get. He was like, man, just pick up one and pick, poke on that fucking light. And I was like, what's up, who's this? And, oh, man, that's what's up, you know, that's what, that's what the city need, need, needed and shit. That's the anthem. Where can I buy it? Where can I get it? I didn't even know what to answer, dog. Is that, I mean, that was my very first song, very first time recording Damn. in the professional studio. And um, it's getting the response that I never thought it would. That quick. And that's and after that shit, he, he, he interviewed me for like 30 minutes. And then Lisa came back in and said, hey, after you're done, I need you to get back in my office. I need to talk to you real quick. So I went and she told me, what are you doing? What, what are your plans? I was like, I don't know. I just wanted you to hear this. And and depending on your answer, I was either going to roll with it or stop. I didn't want to waste nobody's time, you know? And she's like, oh, no. He goes, She goes, how about you? How, how would you want to open up for Light of Shade of Brown? Damn. They have a tour going on promoting their new record. First show is this Saturday in TJ at Club Vibe. Just fuck. I was like, I only have one song. I've never performed before. She goes, you'll get it. Once you're up there, it'll come to you. I was like, what? One song? She goes, yeah, one song. So we did we did TJ, we did Ocentro. I forgot what other cities we did, but that that's um that was when I met ODM and DTTX. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace Brown. to homie. Shout out to ODM. Hell yeah. And I was opening up for Light of Shit of Brown with one song. That's crazy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I was nervous. I didn't know how to control the, the crowd, my voice on stage. I just went with the flow, dog, and, you know. You learned on stage. That's it. Hell yeah. So, you know what? That's sick, dog. That's a sick story of determination and, and believing in yourself and, and just following the dream, but being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And you could have said, oh, that's them, but and been fearful, like, ah, I don't have the confidence. Maybe we should come back Monday, you know? Because most people, I probably would have done that. Keeping it 1,000, like, man, I don't want to offend these people. <laughs> I'll probably come back Monday then. Yeah. But the fact you kept on now, homie, and you kept on banging, homie, that shows your persistence and confidence really took you there. What would have happened if you didn't have that moment? What would have happened if you didn't have that opportunity and Mr. Shadow <laughs> wasn't born that day? I know you were stuck in the street life. You were doing yeah. that kind of shit. What, what, what could have possibly happened? I probably would have been locked up or dead. Damn. I was slanging shit, dog. I was slanging guns and drugs and didn't know anything else. You know what I'm saying? So that was a blessing to me because after that, I literally stopped everything and just started started uh, recording my album. And uh, the rest is history, man. Man, I'll tell you what. I'm fucking glad as a fan because I'm telling you what, you helped change my life. Because I'm being real with you. I didn't believe in homies rapping. I'd be in the back of my homies cutlass, strapped up on the boulevard, 
rolling on some D's, banging on the enemies, and <laughs> we be bumping all this shit, and I get tired of it, homie. Like, if it wasn't, like, dominated and all that shit, like, cool, bouncy beats, yeah. some of this shit was just like, nah, it's not convincing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when I heard you, I was like, damn. It kind of put a seed in my brain, like, okay, I hear NWA, I hear Eazy, I hear all these fools, and I want to rap. But it didn't make me feel like it was possible. It was just like a thought, like, right. like, ah, you want to rap, but it, it ain't gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I heard your shit, I was like, okay, now there's competition out there. Because now I could feel I was sp spitting like little, like little shit on paper and like in my mind, but I wasn't confident to spit it to the homies. Right. But in my little brain, I thought it was so dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, now I got the confidence. Now there's a possibility. Now there's someone doing this shit. Look at the cover. Look at this shit. And the way that I was seeing the streets, because I'm consumer at this point. I'm in the streets really doing this shit, right? So I'm like, damn, look at the way the homies bump this shit. Look at how they're bragging. Like, you got the new shadow shit. Boom. Bumping it. Bases, <laughs> subwoofers just knocking all over the yeah. boulevards. I said, I want to I wanna be like that one day. I want yeah. motherfuckers bumping Mr. Criminal or Criminal at the time, whatever I was thinking, you know? Yeah. I want motherfuckers to know my shit like that. So it put a few in my heart to be like, okay, this shit is possible now. That's it's good. not just, you don't got to just be signing he Jerry Heller or Death Row <laughs> or one of these cats. You could actually get this shit out the mud and do it independently, homie. Yes, so sir. I give you props for that, for sparking that seed in my life, homie, straight up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And the whole goal was, was not to use what everybody was using. Everybody was doing uh, oldies. Mm -hmm. 18 with the bullet and... You know what I mean? Speak on that shit. And my thought was, okay, you know, nobody's doing the funk. Yeah. And that's all I was bumping back in those days. Though. I was bumping funk. You know, yeah. your, your one ways. Your, you know what I'm saying? A little shit that you don't hear every day, like push, pull, fancy dancer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that funky shit. And I was like, okay. Classic shit. So I would do crazy shit. Like I would take Atomic Dog and mix it with another song and mesh it together. And that's would be for another song. Like, like Go Ahead, for example. That song is Push and Pull by One Way mixed together. Damn. <laughs> That's hard. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it meshed right, dog. And when it came out, it it, it, it had that, that One Way feel, but it had that, that, I don't know, that 90s gangster shit I wanted to get, you know, accomplished. And it worked out. It worked out perfect, homes, because that was the anthem of the streets, straight up. Anywhere I went, any boulevard I hit, because I was, I was a little guy ahead, or I was all over the motherfucking spot. And I was always either shotgunning my homie Shy Boy's whip, or in the back of my other gangbanging ass homies rising. <laughs> no matter where we were going, we were here in Shadow. That's, that's a guaranteed up, no matter what, no matter what, it's right yeah, into the sky. Up. So, yeah, it's dope. Being a pioneer and being someone that you could actually say, homie, like, yeah, there was a kid for us, there was a lighter shade of bronze and all that. But you might not realize, but you helped birth this thing we call Chicano Rap out here with this independence because, <clears throat> yeah, you were in a place where it wasn't classified yet, right. but you were carving out a place, which I'm proud to be a part of, that was the independence because before you, there was a Kid Frost, he was signed to Ruthless. Right. There was the the all the different artists that were signed to really big corporations with a lot of money and driven by a lot of dollars behind yeah. and connections and shit like this. How does it feel to say, I was one of the motherfucking ones that helped stamp this shit that we call now on the West Coast that's worldwide recognized that became life-changing to people like myself or that people recognize us and look at us like any other, like a Snoop or Easy when they recognize us to our people, that's who we are. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So how does it feel to be a pioneer of that shit? I mean, it's it's dope. It's dope. It's, not, it's something that I never thought would happen. Yeah. Because I was just doing my shit, just, I was just doing Shadow. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was going to have that impact. I didn't know it was going to get worldwide you know what i mean because they don't at those in those days it only got as far as we took it yeah we drove to your new mexico's and texas and oregon and to all these wholesalers and we we would sell those fucking boxes cds you know what i mean and that's when i say that i sold fifty thousand out the trunk that's because my first press was a thousand cds dog damn out, you know how that shit went yeah out of that money i had enough to press five thousand came back after that five thousand we pressed ten thousand then twenty thousand and we kept it going and going and going. Of course, putting money away and then just, just you know, repressing the album. So once we got to fifty thousand, that's when they got recognized by, you know, East Side, which was barely starting, and they needed something to to get it recognized, and Thump, which they own both of them, you know. Yeah. So. It's 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 crazy. It's, it was just crazy, bro. I was just I was just doing music for the love of it because I love doing it, and everybody around me from in the neighborhood and and people that I knew were feeling it and they were telling me that there was something there. And I still in the, at that time, I didn't know what it was they were listening or hearing, 
that I didn't know was there. Yeah. I was just doing it because I liked doing it, and it was putting money in my pocket. Hell, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that is just crazy. And I'm going to speak on one thing, and I, and I witnessed it, and I'm going to keep it real. Like, with my, own, with my own career, and I've seen it, San Diego was extremely, extremely proud of their own artists. Yeah. Straight up. So, if you got the support of your city, it's over because... Your, your your city was so so protective over their own artists. I remember coming in as high power, no matter where we were killing and no matter what we were doing, that was like one of the only cities in Cali when I put up there would be like, nah, we don't bump LA rap, homie. And I'm like, what the fuck did they just tell me right now? Like, that shit fucked me up. And I was like, okay, well, these are the originators of this shit. Like, you got to give them their props. Like, we came a little bit after Chicano Rap was Night Owls, Little Rob, Mr. Shadow, Mr. Little Ones. Like, everybody knows where this shit really popped off at and where it was coming from. You know right. what I'm saying? It was like, I was hearing 6, 619 so much as a youngster, I was like, fuck, I want to get on and represent my shit too. You know, like, <laughs> so it gets to a point where you got to give, give props and flowers where they're due. And uh, I think a lot of people need to look back and, and see the pride because, in my opinion, nowadays you got all these kids out here that... You know, they chase different cultures, and I don't want to disrespect, and I'm not here to tear nobody down, but I just don't get off on that shit. I don't like using the N-word in my raps. I don't I, I don't really get off on that. Like, even growing up as homies, some of us might have said it like playing around, and to this day it still sticks around, but I know the yeah. difference of not putting it in music. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you might clown around with a homie and say it like on the side or something. Or, right. Like, a, a lot of homies do, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Like Dopey was saying, like, it took him discipline. He grew up in an area that was predominantly black, uh, Inglewood back in the days. And he's like, man, it took us a lot of discipline to not say it no more because we would yeah. just say it and it was just so normal to us, right? But but I, I just think that it's dope that you didn't have to change your style. You didn't have to adapt to a different way of hip-hop. You didn't have to change your lingo. You kept it thorough and you represented. One of my favorite yeah. lines on your whole shit is, is everyone you said, Southern California. Home of real, real soldiers, soldiers, warriors. warriors. Down, oh. down for the brawls, now the coroners. Oh. <laughs> Waiting for the call, because I'll be the one that's making them fall. Come on, yeah, yeah. come on. You know how that's, I'm a real fan. I'm yeah. some real shit. No, good looking now. So, being that you were in that moment, that you had the city representing you, you got the pride, now you got the radio execs um, co-signing you and helping name you, homie. That's a blessing. Yeah. How, now you're taking it from that moment, and now did you even realize at that moment that you're a 619 artist in San Diego, but all of California's bumping your shit? I didn't know that till I started seeing statistics, dog, till I started seeing sales and sound scans. And the craziest part about this shit is that my number one market mm -hmm. was LA. Yeah. Still is. It's it's all the Chicano rap's number one market. Yeah. Yeah. You know is. what I'm saying? Like, I, I would have thought San Diego would have been number one. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, that boggled my, my... It boggled me like... You don't even know, dog. Because I was like, well, how the fuck? I'm from SD, but LA... Repping. Repping. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they're supporting, like, to the fullest. Yeah. And it's crazy, dog. And, you know, much love to LA. Every single neighborhood in LA, man, that, that you know, supported my shit and, and still does. Um, much love. And, and they're, they're definitely a big part of who I am without... Without LA and all those other you know cities supporting me, yeah, I mean I wouldn't be shadow, you know. Hell yeah, and, and right back to your city, homie, because I remember no matter what, we did have one or two homies that said that, and I wasn't used to it. But man, the love out there, that the embrace overall was crazy, and we performed yeah. at that Qualcomm Stadium before they shut it down. I don't know what it is now, but man, I just remember we got like a classic shot of us on stage and like everybody reaching up, and it just yeah. those are the moments that you feel like you made right. it. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, damn, homie, motherfuckers out here screaming for us and know us and shit. And like I said, homie, you helped birth that. So, being that you were getting your name out there, now you're starting to catch attention from other artists, other labels probably wanting to work with you, stuff like that. How did the whole connection in the beginning come? With Little Rob, because I know in the beginning you guys were doing a, a <coughs> album. And I remember as a fan, clearly that I was disappointed because I was like, "Man, these fools sound hard together, right?" <laughs> and then when you opened up the album and it said "Coming Soon," the mayhem clicked. Yeah, and that shit never came. I was like, "What the fuck happened?" Yeah. You so, know what I'm all right. So, it's crazy because that first show that I did at Club Vibe, yeah. opening up for a lot of Shader Brown. Yeah. Little Rob was there as a spectator. Oh shit! He was front row right there with this girl, and they were, you know, they were there through the whole show. And when I got off stage, Little Rob approached me. And he was like, hey, dog, you know, dope shit. I like I like your shit a lot. You know, I'm little, I go by Little Rob. I said, oh, cool, homie, mucho gusto, you know? Yeah. And that was that. At the time, I didn't really know who he was. I never heard of Little Rob. 
and I'm from SD, and, and, and I, I didn't really hear from him, you know? Yeah. So, time goes by, and when I was 14, I met Little One. Damn, that's hella young. I was riding around with Night Out, because, you know, Night Out's from my neighborhood, rest in peace. And he would take me, we, we used to go to Johnny J's house in Palmdale, and to uh, fucking Damn. Halloween parties and party with Big Psych and Thug Life and and you know crazy shit dog. I mean yeah. I met Sir Jinx there. I mean I'm, I mean crazy people. And um, one time we went to uh, Little One's house and I was like 14 years old dog. And you know me me and Little that's my brother. You know what I mean. But back then we kicked off a, a cool relationship. You know what I mean. Like we, we vibed off each other and shit and and. At the time, I wasn't serious about my music yet. I was only 14. I didn't do music till I was 16. So I was just I was just meeting people, you know. And and um, after I did that show in Vibe, and I already knew Little One. Little One somehow knew Little Rob. So this one time, Little Rob said, uh, Little One said, "Hey, darling, meet me at the park uh, by my mom's house." So I said, "Cool." So we pulled up, and it was him and Little Rob. And that's when I really, really met Little Rob. And he's like, yeah, I remember in TJ. I was like, oh, yeah, I was cracking, homie, you know? And that's when I found out that he was rapping, you know? So when I turned 15, we started kicking it, like, super tough. Like, really, really tough, you know what I mean? Like, I'm talking, he'd be at my mom's house every single day after work. He would go pull up. And he lived, like, 35, 40 minutes from me. So every day after work, he'd fucking go to my house. He'd be drinking his 40. I'd be fucking smoking my gin on my shit. And, and then... um once I started buying beats, he was still going to my house, and I just started getting on my songs and shit. Yeah. So we said, you know what? Let's do this Shadow and Little Rob, a.k.a. the Mayhem click. He's like, all right, cool. So we started recording songs and songs and songs. But then about five or six songs into it, we had a fallout. And being that I, I was paying and buying all the beats and paying for the you know studio and all that shit, I kept the songs. So that's why Little Rob is featured on so many songs until I die. You know what I mean? But that was supposed to be Shadow and Little Rob, the Mayhem click album. That makes album. sense. That makes sense. You know? So yeah. so he went his way. You know, he, he went and got radio play and videos and got, you know, major label shit. I stayed underground. I was making good-ass money underground. So I was like, nah, you, you do that, dog. You know what I mean? I mean, we didn't talk anymore, so I was like, do your thing. But that's how that shit came about. That's why he's on my record so many times. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that you say that because I could relate to that again with you. I, I, I've been in situations where I had majors try to sign. And uh, I've had people try to sign that I was no, n not interested in because I want to have control over my own shit. Yeah. And, and I think it's important that a lot of people think that the glitz and glamour comes from signing or giving up your, your rights and all that. But at that point, you become an artist of somebody else's, you know, yeah. stuff it, it, you have two destinies you could either play that and then go that route and then have to c completely change your music and make radio music and stuff and if it's meant for you it's meant for you but if this underground shit and this street shit is meant for you you gotta embrace it because yeah. there's so much love on these streets especially yeah. with you gonna rap and no no disrespect to that because that was a that was a dream for me too like Little Rob also influenced me. You influenced me on as being my favorite rapper, right? But I think he influenced everybody in the game as far as trying to get that radio success, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, a lot of rappers, that's that's their dream. Yeah, straight up. I want to come out, and I want to get signed, and I want to do the videos, and I want to be, you know, on that red carpet shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't, dog. Yeah, like, fuck with it. That never, that, never, that never moved me. Like, money moved me more than that shit. I was like... I don't want to. I don't want to wait ninety days to get paid for my first check on, yeah. you know, on sales and all that shit. Like, and I, I would read contracts, dog, and I would go to my, an attorney and get him, you know, uh, basically in layman's terms, you know what I mean, so I can understand it because yeah. you know they fucking word it to where it, it you fucks with you, fuck something up, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean. So I would go get it and translate it into normal person fucking you know lingo, and they're like, well, they're trying to lock you down for fucking five years. Damn. Or they're trying to lock you down for five albums in six years, or whatever the fuck the case was. And it was like, damn, for this much money? But then you got to make that money back before you get paid? I'm like, hell no. Nah, fuck so that. Nah. Yeah. Recoup, you know what I mean? Like, you learn the recoup game. Yeah, yeah, the recoup game. And it's like, fuck that. I'd rather, I'd rather make my record, you know, sell sell whatever tens of thousands of units, and sell that motherfucker, because I'm going to get another big chunk of money when I do that, you know? And that's the reason why my name is, is so whored out. 
on different labels, different distributors is because, you know, at 18, I got married and had my two kids. You know what I mean? So I needed I needed money to come in quick. Yeah. I didn't have 90 days to wait. You're trying to pay bills. Exactly. Yeah. So so I'm supporting my family. I'm paying bills. And I'm like, that shit ain't going to work for me, dog. So, you know, I would tell my boy, like, hey, let's just drop another record, homie. And he already has some money on the line. Okay, this person wants to buy it. Oh yeah, you know. So so you guys went your separate ways. Whatever you guys' uh, personal shit was, that's 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 what it is. Yeah. Um, have you had a chance to ever speak to him again? Or he won't just... give me that chance. Damn. I've called I've called him out. I've called him out to talk to me. I, I've I've reached out to him. Uh, he avoids me at all costs. I don't know what 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 his feelings are about or what what he's stuck on. But I'm past that shit, dog. Like I'm. I'm married. He's married. He has his family and shit. And, and I'll, I'll be straight out. It was over a female, dog. It was over a female, but I didn't do wrong, homie. Like, he pushed me to do wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't believe me. And we, he claimed that he was my brother, homie. And when I came to him about his broad being fucking foul, he didn't believe me. He mm. accused me. Wow. So I was like, okay, you want to accuse me, dog? And I'm over here trying to be loyal to you and telling you what the real get down now I'm gonna prove to you what kind of dog I can be. Yeah. And that's how I went down, homie. You know what I'm saying? And and everybody knows Excited One and Excited Part Two is about that. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just learned you know, shit. And maybe mommies were banging that <laughs> shit. <laughs> and maybe and maybe that's and maybe and maybe that's what the fuck is going on with him and he can't get past that. Yeah. But he pushed me to that, dog. Yeah. I didn't do it out of spite, like I'm gonna be a fucking I'm gonna be a backstabber, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna do him dirty. Nah. He pushed me to do that. You know what I'm saying? And and the reaction that I got from him, me trying to be fucking loyal, faithful as a, as a brother and telling him like, hey, your girl's out of line, homie. Mm-hmm. You need to check her or get rid of her. And instead fucking going crazy, kicking walls. And, fuck you. I knew this. I knew that. Like, what the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me right now, dog? You're really going to fucking accuse me of doing something that I didn't do or didn't plan on doing? Well, now I'm going to prove to you what the fuck could really be. And yeah. that's what I did, dog. And that's why, you know, whatever happened, happened. And I don't know if you can't get past that shit, but come on, dog. We're fucking grown ass in our 40s, dog. Yeah. Like, like what, what the fuck? You know what I mean? There was a time where, where E-Dub and Kool-Aid were fiddling with the idea of us boxing it out on a pay-per-view match. Oh, they would love that. You know what I mean? I'm not not saying the fans. I'm saying the, the, the powers that be. Yeah. They want to always see us Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, be- they would love that. Because that would have sold. Yeah, that would have sold. And I agreed. Yeah. I didn't even ask the amount of money they would give us. Yeah. I said, hell yeah, let's We're do it. ready to get it. And I don't know who they contacted of his people, but he declined. Damn. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I do shows, and, I, and he finds out I'm booked at this show that I'm going to be there. He will avoid me, dog. That's fucked up. And I think that time that I ran into him in Riverside at the Latin lockdown that my boy Uno threw. Mm-hmm. We, were, we crossed paths because we, I was backstage, he was backstage. He was going that way, I was going this way, and we just crossed paths. And he looked at me, we, we, we shook hands, hugged it out, took a picture, and I was like, oh shit, okay. Maybe from this right here, we could pick up and fucking... The dog, if, if we did a fucking album or even a song right now, yeah, it'd be like Tupac and Biggie doing a song. Huge. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like the fuck, the impact that shit would have? Legendary. Is crazy. Hey, I'm telling you as a fan, I want to see that shit happen. So I mean, if I if I could be on a song with King Little G, and that was some shit that back in the days, I'm going to keep it 1,000. I was just on the phone with uh, Young Dopey the other day. He's like, me and your neighborhood had problems back in the days, but see how as men we get past it, right? Yeah. It's no secret our neighborhood beef. Like, I'm really from my soil. He's really from his soil. Yeah. And we had to look past it. We're grown men now. Like, what am I doing still holding on to some shit that's, that's been... 20 something years old You know what I'm saying Like come yeah. on homie I'm out here bossing up I'm with my family Like let's keep it 1000 Am I really out there Really pushing that Or am I pushing this This positivity yeah. So I had to look in the mirror And say you know what I could swallow my pride I could do this This is bigger than my shit This is for the culture And this yeah. is one of the biggest moves That the culture has seen In over 20 years So if you did that as well With Little Rob I think that shit would just be as Just as monumental If not bigger Because you guys were doing this Since before You know what I'm saying And it's crazy dog Because we've had people from my boy Flossie, my bro Uno, reaching out to him like on some friendly shit like, hey dog, here's a beat. Why don't we do something for the culture? It was at, at one point it was gonna be Night Out, Little Rob, Little One and Shadow on a song. Yeah. And he declined it. Damn. And then another time it's gonna be me, him and Uno. 
and he declined it. One time I got at him, he didn't respond to my shit. He's seen it. And we see him on, on little ones' stories and shit, and he, yeah. he be peeping everything out, dog. You know? But So he's he's got his eyes on everything. Yeah, he just he just rather stay in his own zone and shit, which I respect that, but hey, come on, bro. Like, get get past it between me and you. Let's, let's get past that for our people, our fans, bro. Yeah. Because it's millions of them, and they all deserve to get at least one more record, one one song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Out of me and him for the people because everywhere I go, dog, that's the number one question they always ask me. Wondering you and Rob ever going to do something. If you go on fucking comments and, and different fucking uh, podcasts and different different fucking uh, IGs and shit. That's what they want. That's what they want. That's what they want. You guys are denying them. Yeah. And just like I was denying my people with the King Little G shit. Yeah. That was the number one comment on his shit, my shit. When we spoke, it was like, homie, this they've been wanting this shit for years. Like, yeah. why are we denying them this shit? Like, this is fucking being selfish. You feel me? Like, exactly. the fuck are we doing, homie? So, I'm going to call out the homie Little Rob right now. And I'm calling <laughs> you a homie because we're from the, under the same program. Um... And we all should should show respect. I mean, this is supposed to be united raza, right? Yeah. So I believe that that that's what we do. We stand here with pride. And I've been squashing my beats. I've been standing next to people that people never thought I'd stand next to. And I'm one of the highest selling, if not the highest selling, Latin rap artists in the last 20 years, homie. So if I could do my shit and put my pride to the side and, and step down from my throne and say I'm gonna go stand with another king, then the motherfuckers need to get their shit together. And I think that Rob Rob needs to swallow his pride come to the table and let's do this shit for the community homie and i'm saying it from your homeboy mr criminal straight up yeah that's what it is and uh my lines open anytime fingers knows what it is uh you know he could reach out i know they got something popping rob knows me i mean we spoke before he showed a lot of love and uh we never left on bad terms but i think the culture the culture and the community is calling you know what i'm saying like yeah. we got all eyes on us right now the whole motherfucking world's watching chicano rap is bubbling higher than it ever has been and uh, we're getting it back into a position where we're owners, we're leaders, and, and we're in positions to control our own destinies. So let's not live with regret. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm not. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Fuck yeah, that definitely. shit. Well, without the, with that being said, you move past that. You were able to go and create your own name, become a legend in your own right. You didn't need the radio with it. And I know for a fact, I still heard you on the radio. I still heard you banging on yeah. Power 106. Yeah, yeah. I still heard you coming through with the fucking gangster-ass announcements, the world premieres, the whole shit. So, obviously, no matter what, from the beginning of your career, you didn't need to lean on the record label. You didn't lean, need to lean on investments. It was just straight talent and straight determination and destiny, homie. And that's what got me a lot of these features, dog, with these big artists like Corrupt and Roscoe. Shout out to Gotti yeah. and his brother Roscoe, you know? Mm -hmm. We were recording at Finger Studio, dog, and they're like, who is this? And then fingers like, oh, this this homie right here and shit. I'm like, what? That's, That's how it goes. That's a guy spit like that. Yeah. And Rocco was like, man, let me get a 16. I was like, shit, handle it, my boy. And then Corrupt would come over because you know they were they used to go to the homie uh, Brandon yeah. Bizzle down the street from Fingers. That was uh, Roscoe's best friend. So they would be over there a lot. So they would be walking back and forth. So then Roscoe was in the booth and Corrupt came in. And he fucking got on my hook. He's like, what's up, my nigga? Let me get... Oh, handle it. Yeah. You know? And, and it's like, I didn't pay for those features. They just got on it out of love, out of, out of them feeling my shit. You know what I mean? And they, they probably never thought an essay could spit like that, but there it was. And we, we did a few songs together. Hell yeah. And you see, and I, and I could relate to that, because coming from my position, I've done so many motherfucking features, and people ask me all the time, how much did you pay so-and-so for this? How much you pay? I said, nothing, homie. Yeah. They showed me love. I could say maybe three artists in my whole 23-year career I paid for, it, and it was business. And I don't regret it. Business is business, right? Labels, you got to go through clearances, shit right. like that, if you want to shit on the radio. But nine times out of ten, I noticed when I spit the same shit. I remember when I spit in the studio with G-Unit in uh, spider Log. I remember they were all quiet. They kind of came in, rolling their blunts, kind of serious faces. And I remember after I kicked my verse, and it was at Finger Studio. He could say he could attest to this shit. You say, oh, cuz, nigga, oh, cuz, I say spit hard as fuck, cuz, what you say, your name was, let me get a picture with you, all this shit, right? Yeah. Hey, you need to make 50, all this shit, and next you know, two weeks later, we're in Interscope Records, smoking with Mob Deep, chilling with 50 Cent, like, damn, just yeah. off of your flow, and just off of cat respecting your flow, Yeah. free shit, all this, right? But you know what fucks me up, Shadow? How come our own people can't support us like that? How come yeah. they get a little crooked face when they hear you spit? It, it takes a motherfucker like me with ego to the side to give props. Most motherfuckers ain't gonna sit here and tell you, even if they you are their favorite favorite rapper, Shadow. Yeah. How many motherfucking rappers are gonna swallow the pride and be like, you know what, you're my favorite rapper. Fools don't wanna put down their guard. Fools don't yeah. wanna 
be real, my, show love. My cheese you know shit. Yeah, homie, <laughs> let that shit go because I really do believe when we start supporting each other, like the cats down south used to, like Atlanta, Houston, like even the Bay Area, homie, like, uh, fuck, we're on our own program for sure. We don't need to copy nobody, but all these motherfuckers get bread together. How yeah. come we can't? You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's why I got this podcast, and I'm like, I'm going to reach out to my brother, Shadow. I'm going to reach out to my other brothers right here on the other side, exhibit everybody. We could get money together. And we yeah. could show that we could stand together and tell our stories, uh, make music together, and make history together, dog. You Hell know yeah. what I'm saying? Fuck the bullshit. You get more with numbers, numbers don't lie. All that shit sticking to yourself and being in the corner and st stabbing to you. And I could speak on that. I used to be the artist that didn't want to fuck with nobody. Yeah. I'd be like, nah, homie, these fools are whack as fuck. I ain't spitting on this shit. <laughs> you know, I'm just keeping it real, right? Yeah. But over time, it's like, nah, homie, we got to grow. We got we to gotta work with people. We got to give people opportunities. Yeah. Because at the very beginning, I might not have been the best, too. I might have thought I was the best. But it took me time to grow and elevate my sound. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when you humble yourself, you get exalted. Right. So going from there, I know that there was a history. Uh, everybody knows that that the history. It was a historical label at the time. Uh, they were doing their thing, low profile records. It, yeah. was, it was undeniable. They were doing their thing. Fucking royalties uh. ass had a clamp on the game. <laughs> what was your yeah. dealings, or were, were they in the way? Where did you have allies with them? Like, what was the story with them? Because I know nah, that we, we were always cool, dog. Okay, we, we were always cool. I never. One thing about me, I never compete. Okay, I just do shadow. Hell yeah, you know what I mean. It, it might not be for everybody, but I just do me. I don't compete with nobody. I don't think I'm more or less than anybody. I just go in there, do my shit the way I do. And that's it. Hell yeah. You know, um, Royal, Royal's a cool dude, dog. You super know I mean? cool. He's super cool. Super you know cool. what I mean? Shout out to my big bro, Royal. Hell yeah, shout you out. You know, uh, I mean, he loves, he loves, he loves drama. You know, he loves, he loves drama. He goes, oh, he, man. <laughs> let me tell you about this. I said, bro, I don't yeah. want to hear that shit. And, and, you know what I mean? And it's like, you just, you just got to know, you know, how far to go with them shit. I, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't stand cheese mans and drama, dog. So, you know, but, and he, he loves that shit. He lives off that shit, you know? And, and. So be it. But as far as, as businessman, he's one of the smartest businessmen in the rap game. Super. I mean, he made 19 mil off of his shit. You know what Killing I mean? Killing the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Legendary so, shit. Legendary. So he had one of the biggest, you know, distribution deals. One of the first to, do, to get it, you know, and props to him. I mean, he was able to do it. He found he found a way to get in that door and fucking maximize it, mm -hmm. you know, to, to its full extent. And he had he's the one responsible for Little Rob. Career, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Sancho, uh, uh, what the fuck's Miss Sancha, and yeah. and, and uh, everybody else on this label, dog. Like, he he was he was like a Mexican death row. Yeah, and he was like the brainchild of all that shit. Yeah, yeah. So he he really put in place distribution deals for people. He also had the wholesale game on lock. Like I'm talking on lock. Like this fool was fucking be selling. 10, 20,000 CDs at a time to wholesalers. And I'm talking one wholesaler, then another wholesaler, then another one. You know what I mean? So he, he was doing his thing, dog. And, and like I said, it, it wasn't an easy thing to to get people from Southwest Wholesale or down in L.A. and shit with Don and everybody else that would buy our shit by the cases, you know yeah. what I mean? So, so um, he definitely opened doors for the wholesale market and... And he, he would take not only his shit, but he, he figured that, hey, I can, I, I can make a lot of money off of art, which is the shit that I'm doing with my artists. But if I start fucking trading or buying other artists' CDs and selling those as well, I can make more money. Way more money. And he started doing that shit. And he created so then, that model. So then you go look at his fucking, his cases and shit, and he's, you got shadow criminals, fucking everybody. everybody. Cornel, I mean, you talk about everybody's fucking shit was sold by royalty yeah if it if, if it was good and it made money he would have it and he would sell it he was a smart businessman yeah, yeah. still is yeah still is you know still what i mean is. so like i said you know i have nothing bad to say about him he's always done his shit and as far as me being from from san diego and him him being from san diego he's the one that actually got me in the studio when i was 14 years old damn very first time i ever recorded in a professional studio i did one verse for a song that he got me on with uh, another homie from San Diego, Big June. Shout out to Big June. Oh, shit. Um, another San school. Diego legend. Yeah. yeah. So I went in there. It was a fast joint. I spit my shit. And that was that. You, and you can hear it. My voice wasn't even that mature and shit. And I was, I was still going through puberty and shit. You know what I mean? So You didn't have that VMF. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, 
So, you know, he he's the one that actually got me into the fucking booth after I spit to him and, and showed him some shit. He was like, hey, let me take you to the studio and shit. And he did. He took me to the studio and we, we recorded a fucking song with my boy Alex EMP, rest in peace. And um, and that, I think that's what, that was, that was like the last fucking thing that made me decide to get in the studio on my own. That's when you knew. Yeah, that's when I knew. That's like, okay, knew. I'm on beat. I sound all right. What if I took my time and wrote this? So he helped birth you. Yeah. He helped, he helped, yeah. he helped give the opportunity to let yeah, you know. And you know what? It's crazy because a lot of people always think, oh, Night I'll put them on. Night I'll never fucking had anything to do with my career. Oh, shit. Nothing. Not one thing. That's crazy. Because it was Night I was Uncle Hitman, the one that took me to the studios and to LA to meetings and to, to shows. And he's the one that took me to wholesale to go buy and sell CDs. And he was the one that would press the albums and shit. So if it wasn't for Hitman, and Lisa Vasquez, there would be no shadow. That's fucking crazy. Man, I'll tell you like this. People are put in your life for a reason. And sometimes yeah. we, we bump heads with them. Sometimes we might not agree with them. Yeah. Sometimes they were only meant to be in our lives for a season. Mm -hmm. But they are definitely part of our journey and our destiny. And, and they were meant to be, homie. Regardless of whoever says what, God put them there for a reason. Because you learn your lessons, whether good or bad. Off of your life experiences so of course mr shadow became who he was because of those uh road bumps and hurdles that he had to jump over um there became a moment where as a fan i started getting in the game but i was like okay still watching still paying attention still hitting the studio but still the capone used to be one of those distributors and i remember popping the trunk and i'd be like what's all this whack-ass shit huh so i remember yeah. i'd be like this i'm not gonna say names Garbage, homie. <laughs> garbage. Oh shit! Shadow got a new CD. What the fuck is this? Pit, pit, Boston Entertainment. Oh yeah. Oh, pit homie, and I slapped that shit in. I remember because I had just got signed, That's... and I don't remember what album it was or, or what ride I got, but I had fucking knock and everything. And now I have now Mr. Criminals in the game got a little money, so I'm not in the back of nobody's cutlass no more. I'm in my right. own shit, and I'm <laughs> slapping that shit. And I'm like, damn, this shit's kind of fucking hard. What's going on? Shadow got like a fucking million dollar deal going on or what? Uh -huh. it, it, it felt though like the the yeah. production level up was so big. The fingers beats the features the way you were delivering shit it was like okay you were coming into a different place musically like yeah so what happened the way that album happened is mm. crazy dog i'm not gonna get into details but i'm gonna tell you how it happened yeah so there's a homie from bassett night owls okay i grew up over there big jess when I was shout little, out to little big boy. jess yeah 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 you know what i'm saying um he was he was doing his thing like Millionaire homie. Okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking running around with like four bodyguards type of homie. Hell yeah. And he had a compound right there in, uh, what was it, Pico or some shit? I forgot where it was. It was off of uh, the 60. I don't remember. But, anyways, he had a compound. And he, when I went to talk to him, he's like, why don't you record an album, dog? And I'll break you off some bread, you know? I'll make sure you, you're living right. I was like, okay. He's like, I got a producer from New York, Soul Genius. Shout out to Soul G, man. That's my dude. I stay in contact with him, you know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing. And he's produced for big people. And he said, uh, I got a producer. I have a studio I just built at the compound. I come record an album. I said, okay, let's do that. And he was breaking me off, dog. Like, I was living cool. So we're in the process of mastering the album. 16 or 17 songs deep. And they get raided. And they take the computer. They took everything I did at that studio. Damn. Yeah, when they... It was it was crazy, dog. It was like some movie shit when they caught the homie on the freeway. They... they they shut the freeway down. I mean, it was crazy. Wow. So, they confiscated the computer, right? Yeah. The only songs I have, every time I would record a song, I would have the producer burn me a copy, a rough copy, just so I could bump and hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I had probably 14 or 15 of all the songs that we recorded. As reference tracks. Yeah. Yes, sir. And... He he reached out and was like, hey, dog, don't trip. I, I might be gone, but this shit's going to keep going. You know, I, 
my family's gonna continue what we had going and shit. So now I'm dealing with his sister, his brother-in-law, his mom. You know what I mean? They're like, and they're like, you know what? We just want you to finish the record that way he would have wanted to. Yeah. Soul Genius got scared, went back to New York. And that's when they introduced me to Fingers. And so I told I told Fingers, I said, hey, bro, money's not a, it's not a thing. Like, just tell me how much it's going to cost. But I need to remake all these songs and make another five new ones. So we handled the business. And that's the one that Roscoe and Corrupt are on. Yeah, yeah. Fact. Hard. So Fingers said, okay. And he's like, what type of vibe? I said, dog, just, just make beats, dog, and I'll tell you if I feel them. And every beat he made on the spot, you know what I'm saying? Fingers a beast. <laughs> yeah, he's a beast, dog. And that's and that's when I, I had the talk box and all that shit, you know, Thug Bounce, Haters, all those songs came about. Haters was actually a song that I did after. Like, that was an original song that Fingers produced, and I wrote the song to just the, the kick and the drum. Damn. You know what I mean? The kick and the snare. That's what he had going and shit. And then he started in the bass line and everything else. And I was already like halfway through the song because I was writing as he was making it. So then I drop it and he had the talk box and it, just, it was crazy the song the way the song came out. Yeah. So that's how Pit Boston came about. Fingers brought it to life after it was already taken from me. Should have been a rap. It should have been a rap. It, it's sitting somewhere in the feds. I don't know where the fuck that computer is, but everything I spoke about in that album is one hundred percent true. What was happening in your life? Yeah, yeah. As, sure. as every other record I do, you know, I, yeah. I usually don't don't steer away from what I'm living, what I did, what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do. You know, um, I don't rap about shit I don't have or shit I haven't done. Yeah, you know, because that's not me. I mean, I don't want to fantasize and be like, oh, I'm this, I'm that, when I'm really not. You know, yeah. so, and that's, and I guess that's that's kind of like fucked me in a way, because people expect me to rap about different shit and try to keep up with the times and ride somebody's wave and shit, but that ain't me. You know, I, I always told myself that if, if my my supporters, I don't even like calling them fans, my supporters of my music and my work, if they fuck with me a thousand percent, then no matter what I drop, as long as it's dope, they're gonna fucking they're gonna fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing and and, and God's blessed me that since ninety six to, to now, twenty twenty three, I'm still here relevant and people still look for my shit. Hell you yeah. Know? Hell yeah, that authenticity will, will transcend time, homie. Yeah. And that love that people, uh, like myself, homie, the, the memories, the soundtrack to my life of remembering those moments, those key moments on the boulevard and bumping that shadow on the homie's face. I still remember my homie Silent when the, he had a hard-ass blue fucking Civic. Uh, I don't remember if it was McLean's or whatever. <laughs> the ones that weren't the D's that had like the, the plate right there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, or the, no, the road stars. Road he stars. had road stars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember he was all happy. Hey, fool, you hear this new shadow? Just smiling like, this motherfucker never smiles. Huh? What the fuck? <laughs> you, you're happy because the motherfucker CD came out? Like, yeah, it was, the, the excitement dope. was real, homie. Huh? So I think uh, the, 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 the love that people had yeah. Will transcend because they they could relate to their childhood, the whatever point, moment of their lives. Like I'm saying, I remember Pit Bosses. I was getting bossed up into life as becoming an artist, getting signed. So yeah. I was hearing the transcending your music and like, okay, I gotta keep on going because I gotta catch up to this shit now. Like, okay, yeah, he he sparked the 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 idea that I could rap. But now I'm in the game, and now we're we're running in the same game. And this fool's a little way more ahead of me musically. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm just being real. I was at the point where people was trying to teach me how to stay on, uh, not stay on, be uh, learn bars, like oh. stay on, stay in the the pocket yeah, of not yeah. going over the hook, like arguing with me in the studio, like, hey, you keep going into the hook, type <laughs> shit, you know? And and you're over here dropping <laughs> shit like that already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So obviously I got in the game as a child too. But it was still raw and shit like that. But people loved it. People went crazy for criminal mentality and, and, and till I die. So yeah. it was those moments and those those things that people connect to, and their, their feelings and, and his love with it. I mean, I, I yeah, really do I mean, believe that. Huh? And so, then yeah. and then when I started fucking with Spanish music, I started doing Spanish rap. I took it deeper. Dog, that was crazy because now I'm I'm fucking I'm banking off the English market and then I release a Spanish record and the people fucking totally fuck with it. Yeah. So I'm like hell yeah, you know what I mean? So I mean. I've been doing that ever since, and, and the, the just the love you get in Mexico, dog. It's I don't want to say the love out here isn't pure. Yeah. But they're like devoted to your shit. It's over different. There. It's, it's, different. it's different, bro. For sure. I don't know. I don't know what it is or, or what. But just like when you go to Japan and they sing your shit word for word, word for word, and they don't they don't speak a lick of English or Spanish. Crazy shit. You know what I mean? And and like 
The first time I went out there, I was out there with Aquid. Okay. Aquid was performing their Spanish shit. And they had some basic tracks. And they were fucking rapping their Spanish shit word for word. And Damn. then I get on and I rap some Spanish shit and some English shit, and they're rapping my shit word for word. I'm like, I can't even communicate with these people, but they're but they're singing my shit word for word. That music is lovely. That dog. shit's crazy, dog. There's no boundaries to music. Nothing. You know? <laughs> nothing. The love for it, that when it's good, it's good. Yeah. You can't deny it. Yeah, it's just that's undeniable. Just crazy, you know what I'm saying? Bro. I remember yeah. the first time I went to Japan. I was my homie Sally was here the other day. We were just reminiscing about it. I was like 18, 19. I was like trying to sock fools for like trying to touch me and shit. What the fuck <laughs> you doing? I'm like, come on, hey, chill, fools. These are your fans. I'm like, no, fuck this fools. Don't be touching me, homie. It's like you have to learn. You have to get trained, right? Yeah. You know, I remember we had to use the restroom. At one point, these fools were like annoying me. I was like, Silent, get these fools away from me. I'm gonna knock someone out. And he, this dude's like, keeps on making this noise. And I turn around, I'm like, you better keep doing that shit again. I'm gonna fuck you up. And that fool's laughing. My homie Silent is just rolling, dog. Like, what? You, you're crazy. I'm like, what? Fool, tell this back up. He's like, humming. He was humming your fucking criminal mentality rhythm. I go, is that what that annoying shit was? So I had to humble myself and learn, like, damn, I was about to fucking trip on someone for liking my music. You know, yeah. like, you don't even understand. First time being out of the country, you know. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. So growing from those moments and then getting into the moments where you start working with radio stations that have record companies and like the Kool-Aids and the e does how did the Pocos Pero Locos uh, relationship or deal come about? How did that even come about? So a big part of my career started in uh, Santa Maria. Okay. The 805. Shout out to Santa Maria, yeah, man. San, that's that's, that's out my the, home away from home. The whole 805 area. Yeah, there ain't no they, joke over there, man. You know, from, from Napomo to Santa Maria and everywhere Nipas, in between. Yeah, Lompoc. All yeah, that all that. You know what I mean? They, they really fuck with my shit, dog. And the first times I was out there, he pulled up to one of the shows and he invited, he invited me to his house, his mom's house at the time, right there in Santa Maria or Oxnard. And there was a little fucking shack, bro. Like, he was walking me back there. And I was like, where the fuck is this fool taking me? You know? And it's a, and what year was this? <clears throat> oh, man. This was before, way before the book was put it Oh, so yeah, You're talking about yeah. when you met him. We're talking about 95. Early, early. Okay. Like, before even, before my shit even, I think, till I, that was about to come out. Okay. Because me and, me and Rob were still going up there together. We even did an interview and a song with Dominator at this pirate radio station. Oh, shit. And um, that was in the Pomo. And, uh, and shout out Dominator. People don't yeah. give him his flowers oh, for hey, how, how hey, deep he is in this Chicano rap shit, Dominator, man. Fuck that. Dominator's so sick, bro. Yeah. Shout out to Dominator. For real, for real. You know, my, my, bro, my bro is fucking super deep into the funk. Yeah. And, and his originality and his the way he sings, the way he produces. He's dope. Hard he, ass he, He's fuck. super, and super And cool dope. ass people and good friends. Yeah. And I'm going to make everybody laugh right now. Last time I was up there, I was working too damn hard. And I was going for like two days, three days shooting. I was shooting my movie. Yeah. And we're up there shooting and shit. And I shot my movie in Santa Maria. A okay. lot of people don't know the final ride, right? Rest in peace, my homie G-Rest. And uh, we're up there shooting. And one day I was like about to pass out. <laughs> we joke about it because I was literally like blacking out and shit and I wake up and this fool's got a sandwich like a peanut butter sandwich in my face and we always laugh like hey fool he'll be like when I'm when I'm tired and something he'll be like hey fool you want a peanut butter sandwich <laughs> I start laughing I'm like, shout out to Don for saving me yeah, that day yeah, yeah for sure but yeah, yeah I didn't mean to interrupt you I just no, had to good. Like, cut in go ahead though no yeah so that, that's where I met E-Dub and we, we went to his house recorded a song and he was just he had a little fucking four track. I don't know what the fuck it was, but he made it work. And I dropped a verse. And then time just passed on. Years passed on. And I guess he met Kool-Aid. And, and they started they started uh, doing that Pocos Pero Loco shit. Yeah. And Kool-Aid always claimed every everybody was her favorite rapper. Okay. Every time you ran into her. Yeah, oh, she, she was oh, good at selling yeah, it. Yeah. Yo, oh, oh, my favorite rapper of all time. And it's like, okay, it made you feel good and shit, you know? Yeah. And, and he dubbed. Uh, he just had slappers, dog, and, and uh, we talked, and it came to where we we worked out a record album, and and, and uh, the deal went. He produced every record on the album, and um, we ended up doing like two or three albums. I freaking forgot. You guys but are that, smashing. But that's when we you know did the sound of my heater with Daz and and who wanna roll that bounce rock skate that roll shit, shit. Was hard as fuck. You know what I mean? And uh, every every other record that came out of there and. The production was on point. And, of course, Kool-Aid was pushing it, you know, on the Pocos Pero Loco show because it was her husband and shit, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and props to E-Dub, man. E-Dub is a sound. very fucking talented producer, engineer. Uh, he's he's super dope. His his sons actually rap and produce, too, dog. 
and they're dope as fuck. Shout Hell out yeah. to them, homie. Hell they yeah. reached out to me not too long ago, and he wants to get me on a joint, and he sent me some beats that he made, and I was like, who produced this? Oh, I did. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. So he definitely got his dad jeans in him, you know what I mean? And, That's dope. And, and um, it's, it's, it's good to see that happening, dog. And, and E-Dub has always been cool with me. Um, Kool-Aid has always been cool with me too, dog. One, one time... Um, I, I said some things that I shouldn't have after a performance at the Universal. There, there used to be a club at, at, at Universal Studios. Yeah. The Velvet Room. What the fuck? I forgot. Yeah, it was some shit like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I performed there. The the, the, the show was dope as fuck. And I, at the time, I was drinking. I don't drink alcohol no more. But at that time, I was off a of handy dog. And and I just, you know, when you're drunk, you speak the truth, dog. And, and that day, I just went off on Kool-Aid, homie, in the elevator, dog, and told her how I felt. The filter came off. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I, maybe I, I shouldn't have, I know I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. You know, but everybody in the elevator was like, awkward moment type shit, like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, and, and uh, it took years. We, we stopped fucking with each other for a long time after that. Uh, and, and it was crazy, because even after that, I still went to go sleep at their house in Calabasas and shit, and... It was just awkward, though. You know what I mean? The next morning and shit, like, she didn't even want to fucking see me. And e Double was like, all right, I'm going to take you to the Amtrak and shit so you can go back home. Yeah. And we never spoke for, for years, dog. And, and uh, uh, we spoke after that. But when it was, the situation was cool, though, when I was fucking with them. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and uh, I think it really helped me. It helped me uh, learn different things in the industry. Yeah. Well, uh that's what I was gonna ask you next if you if you took anything away from it. But before I got got there, I wanted to also highlight that a lot of people don't realize a lot of the people, the powers that be in the rap game, yeah. whether it was radio stations, whatever, nine times out of ten they had a lot of selfish agenda. And 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 you can't hate on it because as a businessman, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I probably would have did the same thing, right? Yeah. But the real hungry artists on the outside were trying to get in and get those radio plays. And if you got that radio play, it was truly love, right? Because they weren't really making money on you other than you bringing authenticity to the station that you were, they were playing the shit that the streets really wanted. Right. But most of the shit that they were playing, Let's Keep It 1000, was all E-Dub production. Yeah. A lot of that shit, Let's Keep It Real, as, as a label, where not everything is a hit. Some of it's going to be a miss. A lot of yeah. that shit was bad, homie. They were yeah. playing a lot of shit that was whack, homie. So yeah. the, the list was fucking garbage. A lot of the shit was whack. And they were giving opportunities to people. And not everything's going to be perfect, but I feel like that show was an opportunity that came, and, and it could have been a lot better if they pushed more of what the streets wanted instead yeah. of their agenda of what was signed to their label. You feel me? It had a lot to do with Power 106, too. Yeah. You know, Power 106 will control a lot of their playlist. That makes sense. And a lot of the shit that they would promote, push, and say. For sure. Uh, you know, the program director would only allow so much shit. Because, I mean, you got to remember, I think it started at midnight. Yeah. Then it went to 10 o'clock. Then it moved down to like seven o'clock yeah, or something. Kept shit. getting more, more so better. Like as, time as, time as it grew, then the program director seen that the people wanted it. You know, they wanted part of it. So, but they would still control what could be done on the show. Yeah. So that had a lot to do with it. But I mean, they could have done a little better job. Yeah. Like. Yeah. You know. I think even Rasa Radio, like the homie ODM, no disrespect, but. It's real. I mean, I would love to chop it up with him myself. And I'm pretty sure he'll laugh with a guilty little smile because everything that was, every other song was like, and we just got a studio and I just produced this for this cat and this is this track and this is my new song featuring Ambrosia and all this. And that's like, okay, there's a lot yeah. of ODM shit coming out of here. But <laughs> it's cool though because honestly, I'm being real. Like, if this station right here was to play Chicano rap only and it wasn't a podcast, what the fuck am I going to play mostly? You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm going to play most of my homies. I'm going to bang YC Tokes, Big Timps, my homies, all my all my homies that I've always fucked with, Ras Rascal, rest in peace. Um, that's just the way it should be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you got to take care of your own backyard. So it, that's a fine line. But as the artist on the outside, knowing that everybody was buying your shit, like our shit was the hottest shit at that time, right? Yeah. So, to not have that number one rotation on it was like, fuck this station. Fuck this motherfucking show. Yeah. It, that shit ain't keeping it 1,000 because none of these dudes that were getting played on the show were, could do what we were doing. We're selling out motherfucking shows to where Hastings was wrapped around the building twice. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And yeah. these are big buildings that are like the size of fucking Best Buy or Best Buy. Like, not no little ass companies. Yeah. Like, big shit. We would pull up and be like, Mr. <clears throat> Criminal Thing, I would damn near be like, 
almost uh, nervous, like pulling up with my homies from the hood, like, damn, they got my my name on this, and I'm supposed to fill this shit up, and then you pull up behind the thing, and I was just like, holy shit, yeah, what yeah. the fuck happened? Those, All these motherfuckers are really here for me? Those, you signed those, for those, five uh, hours. Those Tower Records, Sound yeah. Goodies, Warehouse. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Violet, hey, Violet, shout out to Violet Brown. Man. Violet Brown, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you a story right now. I got to get another one in. <laughs> they called us in to do a, a fan, uh, what did they call it, uh... Oh, uh, work appreciation at the warehouse warehouse, homie. And they called on me and Little Rob, and they said that that's what the people in the warehouse that actually wore. Okay, so warehouse records was warehouse records. Right. But they had a real warehouse in Carson. Right. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah. we pull up, and they're like, they personally requested, it's a it's an employee barbecue, and Violet Brown is requesting Miss Criminal Little Rob. I was so fucking nervous, homie. Because <laughs> up to that point, I was on stage yelling at people, gangbanging, throwing on my hood. I didn't have that. Radio song yet. I didn't yeah. have nothing on the radio. I didn't have that friendliness. All I had was that hardcore criminal, you know? Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? So I remember I getting hella nervous. I was like, man, I need something to lean on. Like, hey, silent. Silent, pull up with me, fool. We got to do something. You got to help me out, fool. When I'm out of breath, catch my breath. When I'm this, I remember that clearly. And we went in there and we rocked that bitch. And I remember everybody at the end was like around my car, around us. And Rob was right there, but I, I felt a power. I was like, damn, homie, this yeah. is the fool that I grew up next to. And everybody's fucking flocking to me. People are surrounding our shit. That's when I realized my power. What, what was a moment in your life where you realized like, fuck, homie, like my shit's taking off. My shit's above all these other cats. Like, I know you say you didn't worry about it, but yeah. you had to be aware of it. So, that came to me, dog, one time. Me and Nino, rest in peace, had a in-store autograph signing mm -hmm. in Escondido at uh, Sam Goody's. Okay. And when I walked into the store, there was a billboard. They always had a billboard of who was selling number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Top five selling artists. I'm talking every genre. Hell yeah. And it was Snoop. It was Trey. And it was Mr. Shadow. Fuck yeah, let's get that again. That like, deserves to be re re relived with some celebration. What the right fuck? There. I Gangsta. couldn't believe it. I was like, I'm top three, and number one and two is fucking Snoop and Dre. Like, come on, dog. Like, Million dollar machines behind them. Yeah, you know? So I was like, yeah, exactly. And I was thinking to myself, and these cats got money behind them, dog. And this is just me and my boy out the trunk shit. So that made me feel good, and they made me realize that... The numbers weren't lying. That's like, huge, homie. That that the numbers were, were fucking there, and they recognized it, and I was top three. Damn. <laughs> and whatever happened to Violet Brown, homie? I don't know. I, she's still out there in the music game. I Man, mean, she's cool as fuck. Yeah, she's cool. I mean, dog, she would hit me up, be like, "Hey, Shadow, I need thirty thousand of this one, thirty thousand for the hit store, thirty thousand And she was a big part of uh, my living comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she would order. 30,000, 20,000 units. Oh, you were dealing time. directly with her. Directly. She was, oh, shit. She was, she, was, she, was the, she was the main buyer for the warehouse music. Yeah, she was. So she would, she was the one that hit me up and be like, hey, yeah, I need 20,000 of this one. I need 20,000 at this store, 20,000 at this store, 20,000 at that one. And she would That's fucking come crazy. in with those crazy orders, dog. And it's like, sometimes it was hard to keep up. I'd be like, hey, I'll hit you next week. And I was like, hey, we got to go to the fucking printer and print Price up. Price these motherfuckers yeah, up. Yeah. We're losing money now. Hell yeah. Couldn't and, keep and, up with the dope. And that's what I'm saying. Shout out to her because she had a big, big, big impact on my financial stability, dog. Like, she was a big reason why I had I had money in my bank account. Yeah, when we went to the back, I was showing you my whips and you're like, yeah, I had a 62, <laughs> I'm like, damn, homie, you were paid back in the days, huh? Yeah. You came in a, uh, you came in a, in an era where it was also a, uh, how could I say it? it? It wasn't so much competition. Yeah. You if 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 you made it, it was a lot harder. There was no social media. There was none of that shit. None so that. if you made it, it was a lot, lot, footwork. lot, lot, lot harder to get your name in there. It meant yeah. so much more. It was a, it was footwork that these young cats yeah, never never exactly. They'll homies. never know what it is, That's dog. What I try to explain, homie. Yeah. We got it out the mud. We got it out the trunks. We actually had to get out there, yeah. shake hands. Motherfuckers these days would be like, we outside, we outside yeah. with their phone in in their backyard. Yeah. Like we, like we, nah, we, all, we outside with a laptop. Then you just press one yeah. button. Yeah, it's around the world and nah, shit. Nah, we were outside yeah. for reals, all over, all over the yeah. world, all over. Going the to different. Neighborhoods had to. to different record stores. Had to. I would have to go to downtown LA to the wholesalers and then take it to fucking Riverside, Corona, and other fucking cities in the, in, down in LA yeah. to take CDs to and shit. And it was like, damn, sometimes, you know, you get hit up, you get into little jams and shit, but a lot of them. 
I heard stories yeah. from, from from all the rappers previous to us because when we were roll, roll up in certain areas, they'd be like, oh, yeah, you guys be careful because these fools got tripped on before you. And I'm yeah. like, damn. All right, so <laughs> let's let's make sure we don't do this or do this right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, fools are getting robbed. Straight up. Fools are getting robbed because they, they're like, hey, this motherfucker just picked up 20, sold them at the, this fool. I mean, he, we're talking 40 racks. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Come, so. come, let me come pay Mr. <laughs> Shadow's homies a visit. Not these ones. We're ready yeah. for your ass. Yeah. Hell yeah. Now, that's dope. Now, I want to ask you, being a, again rewinding to to that you've had so much experience and vision, and insight to the real the real machine of music before the the quick instant gratification of going viral. It was yeah. actually you had to make relationships. You had to get out there, shake people's hands, make the relationships with the Violet Browns, uh, look in people's eyes, keep your word, make sure you delivered the product, uh, do a dope show, make sure that you kept people intrigued with yeah. the music. It was more of a job. It's a lot more to keep up with, right? Yeah. What is your your opinion on the way that that things have shifted in these days? I know it's a fine line because some people have the argument that, oh no, now I could just do this shit from the couch and touch the whole world, but it doesn't last as long. But then you right. got people like us that came out the motherfucking mud and we transcended into this digital age, and we're learning and we're we're floating along and then capitalizing off that, right? So I just want to know what you think, like. Was it easier for you back then? Is it easier for you now? Do you prefer back then? Do you prefer now? Like, what, what is it? I honestly prefer back then. Okay. And the reason being is because it used to be about talent. Yes, it did. You know, this internet shit made everything about popularity. Fuck yeah. It was a popularity you know, contest. Though. So it could be the wackest motherfucker on this planet Earth. But if he's popular, he's moving numbers, dog. Yeah. And that's fucked up because the people like yourself and myself, dog, that have talent. Mm hmm are not being appreciated the way that we used to be. Nah. Because you got these little fucking popping sensations and shit overnight that could press a button, you know what I'm saying, and, and get that popularity that took us... Years. Fucking years. Years. I'm talking 27 years or some shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like... And these cats come out last year and now they're like fucking major artists. Crazy, right? And they're fucking garbage. Garbage. But they're not hot in two years, a year and a half. No. Nah. Nobody will know about them. They won't be interviewed on a podcast 27 yeah. years later, homie. Huh? Exactly. That's the difference. So, you know, I think I think it's just, it's, it's fucked up. Like I said, it's not about talent anymore. It's about popularity. And that's just the generation, though. That's just the, the world we live in now. So, you know, if I can go back to those days, I would. Hell yeah. What was your favorite part of those days? Because I have my favorite part. I want to tell you after you. Of, of those days? Yeah, of the, those days. The money. The money, okay. The money, because I was living extra fat and comfortable. Fuck yeah. You know, like, there's not too many homies that, that saw M's, you know For what sure. I mean? And there's very few of us that got to live that, enjoy that, and unfortunately blow that with you know what I mean we didn't have no fucking wealth management or financial advisors I didn't even know what the fuck that was until I, I got with labels and managers that told me hey dog like are you do you have somebody managing your money like nah man what the fuck I got stacks in my closet and shit you know yeah. what I mean I got some in my closet some in the bank account and, and it's you know it's it was fucked up it's, it's it was but you know what I have no regrets I have no regrets because I can say I did that. Yes, sir. I used to walk around with a pound of gold in my neck. You know what I mean? That that medallion with that that was a pound of gold and shit. Damn. You know what I mean? So I, I bought a lot of dumb shit, but I, again I could say I did that. Babe, please memo, let's stop going to the jewelry. <laughs> I need to stop these chains, man. Cause that sounds very familiar. <laughs> And I think it starts time to start learning off our mistakes. No, those are investments, man. Yeah, Remember that. I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, God bless you if you could do it and yeah. keep doing it. You know what yeah. I mean? But unfortunately, see, a lot of people don't know this, dog. But I was out of the game for a long time. Yeah. I was out of the game. I had full custody of my kids, dog, when they were five and three or five and two years old. Oh yeah. My son was five. My daughter was two, and I I had full custody of them. Man, God bless you for that. You know, so I didn't do no music. I didn't do nothing with nothing, dog. I lived off of money that I had. That was part of my blowing my money because I didn't I didn't go to do shows. I didn't buy beats. I didn't record. I didn't do nothing with music, dog, for a long fucking time. I didn't come back in the scene. So I was gone, I want to say, from maybe 04 to 2012. Wow. So eight years went by without me dropping anything. 
people forgot about me. I always wonder what the fuck happened. Well, I'm telling you what happened. I had full custody of my kids and I devoted my life and myself to them. You know what I'm saying? And I raised them. There was hard times. I'm not going to say it was easy because I, I was a fucking single dad trying to know how to take care of a little two-year-old girl. You know what I mean? And my son's five. And no matter who you are or what walk of life you come from, your kids are always going to need their mom. And unfortunately, at that time, their mom was young and just was reckless and and there wasn't in their life. You know what I'm saying? Um, now they have a good relationship with her and everything. But at that time, I had to fucking be mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't be out partying days until 3 in the morning and shit. I fucking literally stopped everything I was doing, dog, and devoted myself to those kids. Wow. You know, and now they're going to be, my, my son will be 24 in September. My daughter just turned 21 in January. So it was, it wasn't easy. It was hard. And it was, oh, yeah. it was even harder not, not having, it was hard putting out money and not having income coming in. You know what I'm saying? I so, only imagine that so, so that money I had stacked away was what I was living off of, dog. You know? And, and it was, it was crazy times, bro. And then you're already accustomed to the lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, going from from people doing shit for you to doing it yourself. Not that I was bougie and shit like that, but I mean, I'd go do stupid shit like go to the racetrack and drop ten thousand on a horse. You know what I mean? Win or lose, I didn't give a fuck. But at that point, I was regretting shit that I was doing because, you know, it got down to the point where that pound of gold had to fucking go get sold so that I can fucking keep on going for a few weeks. Yeah, you know what I mean? So. Again, no regrets. I, I mean, and, and my wife will tell you, my, my kids are my life, you know, and I don't regret stopping my career to raise them. Not not one bit. I would do it over again if I had to. Hell yeah. We need more men like that. That's why I said God bless you for that because my, my pops wasn't there. A lot of punk ass dudes just take the, the easy route and they're out. They're like, fuck this, I'm out. It, it's too easy. You know, they hit a road bump and it's like, it's easier to just dip out and run from your problems, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. the fact that you had a career, you had the world screaming your name, you had fans, you had every single luxury of life that you could have wanted, but you said, nah, I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to choose my family and I'm going to make sure I'm there for my kids. Yeah. Amazing, homie. Yeah, I let, I let all that shit. That. I let all that shit go, though. That's amazing, homie. You That's know? the type of shit that needs to be celebrated in our culture. There's things that we could do as men, make our accolades, make music, all that shit, rock crowds, but... The most important thing is, is is raising the kid right because yeah. they're our future, homie. And as cliche as that shit might sound, homie, people over here complaining about the country, complaining about our state of how shit is. Well, guess what? It's, it's also how, due to how the last generation brought up the next generation and how motherfuckers don't care. Now, imagine a new generation of moms and social media people that don't give a fuck and they're mm. not even paying attention to their kids because they just want to be on social media and yeah. get attention and be in other people's DMs. Now we got a serious problem, homie. So, yeah. so that that's why we use platforms like this to tell stories, to show the kid that doesn't have guidance right now that that their mom might be busy or their pops did leave, and they're like, you know, I don't fucking care. I'm gonna make it regardless because that's what yeah. we did. You know what I'm saying? Hell I think yeah. that shit's amazing, dog. Um, moving into the future, now that you've had so much experience and everything, um, what is your opinion on Latinos saying the N word? That shit, to me, I never fucked with it, but I want to know your, your point of view. I've I've never fucked with it, dog. And uh, I believe in, I don't know if it was my first or second album, mm -hmm. or Mormon's Out of Conscience. Um, I, was, I was in a low riding game, and, and, you know, I was deep into it with my homies from Majestics in San Diego. Yeah. And they'd be blacks and Mexicans. And like you said, we'd fuck around and, you know, be like, oh, you know, Say it fucking around, and I believe I said it on. on I say I say ch fucking with my cholo or something, with, chilling with my ch cholos and and something with my, you know what I mean? First and last time, dog. Like I I hear it now and I'm like, what the fuck was you thinking? Like, but I wasn't doing it in that sense. I was doing it because that's how I would fucking interact with the homies that were black 
they were my homies. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I would, and that line was for them because we would low ride together, and and it was it was just part of the culture I was living with the low riding shit. And you know, I had my my SA homies and I had my black homies, and we would fuck around like that. Yeah. But it's not in my vocabulary. It's not something that I would ever use. Not something that. To each his own. Mm-hmm. We're always going to have that debate where people are going to say, oh, well, I grew up around that shit. That's the way I was brought up, blah, blah, blah. It still doesn't make it right. Yeah, it doesn't. You know what I mean? Because you already know how it goes, though. You get locked up and you fucking try to say that to a homie like, hey, that's the way I was brought up. I don't give a fuck how you were brought up. Yeah. You know? That shit don't fly. That shit don't fly. So as for me, I don't use it. It's not in my vocabulary. I don't think homies should use it, but they do. And again, to each their own. I'm not here to judge anybody. Um, it would just be fucked up if somebody got in a wreck because of it. And uh, that's that. But I, I, I don't use it. I'm not going to use it. I don't need to use it. You know, I don't need I don't need that word as a filler when I'm spitting my shit. There's millions of other words I can say, you know, other things I could do to avoid using that word. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh, that word doesn't describe me and my people, me and my homies. Me and my anything. Yeah. So not a true representation of no, nah, no. Nah. Nah, I'd, I'd be I'd be going to the left. It's definitely not. And like Dopey said, like I'd be uh, ashamed to go to war because he was speaking on it at, from a position of being in the penitentiary and right. going to county jail and shit. And he was really facing that with his challenges, right? Right. He's like he he's seen the younger generation running around saying it, and one of the OGs from the black side pulled him to the side and said, "Look, Dopey, we we lost a lot of uh." We, we lost a lot with that word, right? Yeah. We went through a lot. We, we struggled with that word. Like, tell them dudes to chill, right? Yeah. So I guess when he went to go tell the homies, they're like, man, I'll say whatever the fuck I want a couple of them, right? And he said that he told everybody, like, homie, I'd be ashamed if we went to war over that fucking word. And yeah. we have camaradas out here bleeding and dying over that shit. Yeah. Like, come on, homie, let's get it together. And when he said that, that was like one of the most deepest shits I ever heard. So I believe that everybody has... Um, the right to say whatever they want but I feel like we need to get to a place back of pride like when I got in the game I was so proud to be a Latino on the microphone I was so proud to be like a Mr. Shadow with my bald head and my Dodger jersey and representing my <laughs> way with my blue rag right Right. I don't see how these fools aren't proud how they're sagging and they say the black the, that word more than the blacks like I literally hear yeah. I was playing some of my shit some of my shit and then I went and like the next playlist cause we're all brown it's like now playing this and I didn't get in time to change it I'm like, damn, did that fool just say that shit like 30 times in the first verse? Like, no lie. Like, yeah. no cap. There has to be something. Someone needs to set the bar. That shit needs to change. I don't know. There needs to be a revolution. I don't know what the fuck it is. Call, <laughs> call me old school, but I'm yeah. old school to the fullest end. Yeah, no, I, I get you. I don't fuck with that. Now, being the fact that your music transcends and keeps on going and keeps on passing different generations, how did it feel to get that phone call from King Little G and say, hey, my G? I need you to represent on this song where we're going to hold the flag for the culture and we're going to release this shit on Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. And this motherfucker is going to be some shit that's the biggest song that's probably hit our shit in the last 20 years, homie. We ain't never had that many spitters and, yeah. and homies with brown skin that have respect in their different lanes that 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 came together like that, dog. Like, how did that shit feel? It was crazy, dog, because, so, Lil G's been at me for a while now. Yeah. Or like maybe three or four years now. Okay. And one time he invited me to his studio and shit in LA on this big fucking sky rise, dog. And it was crazy because it was that one time where LA had a 6.0 earthquake and we were in that motherfucking building and that shit was swaying back and forth. Damn. I was like, holy shit. Um, but we were there going through his new songs and shit. And he, you know, he was just, we were just chopping it up. And he would always tell me, hey, I need to get you on a song. I need to get you on a song. And then uh, finally, he, he he sent he sent that beat that he's you know that that's the one he sent. And I said, cool, I'm you know do my shit, send him back. And um, but it's dope, it's dope to the sense that, and I and I see a lot of youngsters that that you know are stuck on that. Oh, you know, I'm fucking with the new, I'm not fucking with the old type of shit. Yeah. But you know, with all due respect, all that new shit. The foundation to that shit is our old shit. Straight up. You feel me? Like, not not only yourself, but other artists that have told me, I was fucking with your shit tough growing up. Like, you inspired me to rap. 
you know, to some of these big cats out here that the young crowd respects and looks up to and shit. Oh yeah. Like, that's crazy, and, and, it, and it feels good. It feel it feels like I did my part. It feels like I, I did my job, and I did it right. If I got if I got through to you and made you feel something inside and want to fucking push harder or do do whatever it is that you that you did from listening to my shit, you know. And and, and that other homie that told me that if he if he got that out of my shit too, it just it feels good, dog. It's like a it's like a pat on the back, and, and you know what I mean. It's more than a pat on the back. It's like a hug, like good shit, my boy. You know what I mean? Like they respect the craft, you know, and 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 uh, they're not afraid to tell me or or show me, you know. And and G's always told me, dog, like I need to get you on some shit, dog, you know. And 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 we're gonna get some more shit cracking. But I think that doing what we did spoke volumes. You know, and, and there needs to be, be more of that shit, dog. Like, you know, like you said earlier, you know, fools need to put their egos and their pride aside and, and just do it for the love of the culture, the love of the people, you know, because more people are going to love it than hate it. Straight up. You know, and and I, I've seen a couple fucking comments, on, you know what I mean? And, oh, fuck Shadow, he ain't shit. He, he's trying to ride their coattail and shit, this and that. Like, motherfucker, I ain't riding nobody's coattail. You know what I mean? Like. Now well, you got the call. You you got the call. They called yeah, on you. Huh? Yeah. So whether whether I did it or not, I'd still be me. Straight up. You know what I mean. Straight up. And and and, and yeah, th- this this just it's a better look that the old and the new, you know, are are, are on a track together, different hoods from different cities. You know, it, it's showing. Like I said, it's, it speaks in volumes because it's something that hasn't been done. Hell yeah, and it separates the boys from the men. Oh yeah, I get asked about uh, about a lot of cats out here, and no disrespect, but I, I sometimes I trip out like, how why are motherfuckers asking me about this cat? Like this dude ain't got no <laughs> no certifications, yeah. no uh, <clears throat> qualifications to be in the same same uh, conversation with me. So I don't understand it, but I think that when we get on a record like that, then it sets the bar high. You feel me? And, it, and it's it's dope because you know you you and G got got the bigger platforms. You feel me? And, and for you guys to reach out. And spread it out on both of yours, and it's reaching millions. You know what I mean? It's it's um, it's just crazy because people think that Shadow hasn't reached masses, and that now I got to reach whoever because of you and G and shit. But like I said, man, it's something that needs to keep you know getting done. We need to get more homies and shit with real talent on a, on records and shit, and show that it's. It can be about talent and not popularity. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, I don't get tired of saying it. it. It needs to keep getting done. We need to make more songs like that with different people. And I don't have to fucking necessarily be involved in it, but I'm saying other cats. Other cats that, that uh, you know, sometimes it, you don't see eye to eye with this other cat, but the people need it, the people want it. Why not? You oh, know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. It's powerful, homie, and, and leaders and bosses standing together with our different experiences, our different supporters, our different um, lanes and what we do and what we bring to this. At the end of the day, it's only going to make everybody benefit. And I laugh because I still think it's it's funny how some of these cats, like we, we get brought up because we can spit. I get yeah. brought up because of my business acumen. G gets brought up because he's doing all the shows, all the shit that he's killing, right? Yeah. You, you've been doing it for years. You get that respect. But when cats bring up these other cats, like, what what the fuck have they done? Like, yeah. why don't you talk about the music? I don't <clears throat> ever hear someone bringing up to me that someone's bringing up a bunch of negative shit that they're getting their name popping, so to say, or, or people are speaking yeah. about them, so to say. But it ain't never about the fucking music. It's about some mamadas that they did or some fucking bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's cool because, you know, you guys that have the platform and are, are able to do that, that's dope that you're doing it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I never... I never try to do something for somebody that they could they can't do themselves. Yeah. Like that's why if you've seen I've always been on my own. I never Night I'll rest in peace would always tell me, Hey, you should be down with sawed off, dog, you know what I mean? Because we're from the same hood and it'd be dope. Mm-hmm. And respectfully I never did just because I wanna be me on my own. Mm-hmm. And I'll be responsible for my own shit. Now, I never put anybody out, I never fucking put anybody on because there's nothing that I could do for somebody that they can't do for themselves. Unless I was doing something that was like, holy shit, in the fucking millions and anything I touch is gold, then I'd be like, okay, homie, here, let me put you on and shit, and you take it from there, you know? I but, see. But I've never been in that position where I could do something for somebody that they couldn't do for themselves. Hell yeah. 
You know what I mean? So if, if you're doing the same shit I'm doing, what the fuck makes you think that I can do something for you that you can't do yourself, dog? Like, being independent means being independent, doing shit on your own. And that's what I've done. And I think that that's where people get me fucked up. Like, oh, you know, you know, you you have plugs and you can put people on. Like, it ain't about that, dog. It's about whatever I, I bring to you, you can go get yourself. Yeah. So nobody catered to me, you know? And it's not it's, it's not putting somebody down or being like, nah, I'm not going to plug you in. It's, but it's like, you can do that on your own, dog. I don't need to take any credit for that. Yeah. You know, do it on your own and take your own credit. Hell yeah. You know, but. Well, I, tell, I speak from the opposite side of that. Being blessed in the position that I am, I have been able to bless many homies. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Change lives, make dreams come You're true. You're in that position. Millions of streams, millions yeah. of dollars generated off this shit. So it's just, there's a flip side to every coin. Yeah. And it, but it's what you do with it. Because I could have held on to it and been like, fuck that, homie. I'm just going to be criminal. I ain't fucking with nobody. Yeah. But I helped change many lives. And we helped put on many people. And uh, I'm proud of that shit. Homie. So yeah. it, there's different points of views. And I respect your point of view. And uh, I just think that everybody has a different mentality, right? Ford doesn't do what Chevrolet does. Exactly. They market different. They, yeah. they they approach the game different. So that doesn't mean that Chevrolet's right or Ford's right or either one's wrong. It just means that we all get it in different ways. Right. That's a motherfucking beautiful thing. I mean, yeah. that's the blessed thing about our destinies and our stories is we all have different paths to walk. And it is what it is. We all choose to go this way or that way. But what we did do is come together and make a motherfucking monumental smash Hell that yeah. will be immortalized in our culture. And I do believe that the next generation will take that and say, fuck, I could do some shit like that too. I need to put my pride aside. Now, look at what my brother Uno's doing, dog. Yeah. He tried to bring the culture together with these Latin lockdown shows. Uh-huh. Yeah, he did. You know, and he did to a certain extent. Yeah. Not to the extent that he wanted it to be. So he took a little bit of break off and, and analyzed everything, mm-hmm. did his diligence and fucking found out what needed to get done. He had a fucking vision. He had a plan to do these fucking... And he, for five years, he told me, dog, one of these days, dog, I'm going to fucking do a festival, a fucking festival for for our fucking raza mm. and bring bring the culture together, dog, and, and we're going to make it, we're going to make it crack. Not too long ago, a few months ago, dog, he did Chicano Music Festival in San Diego. There was like 3,000 people there. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? And that planted the seed for the one that's coming in Vegas, September 9th. There you go. At the Craig Ranch Regional Park. Now that standing right there, dog, is going to be for like eight, ten thousand 10,000 people. But we're talking, he's going to have Aztec dancers, low riders. He has he has Mary Jane Girl, Sly Slick and Wicked, Midnighters, uh, myself, Little Weirdo. Uh, fucking Miss Crazy, uh, Glika One, he, dog. He's just he's just bringing it all together, bro. And and the people are embracing it, and it's something that the culture needs. And he's doing it, you know, kind of like what you guys are doing, bringing the culture together. Yeah. So he's doing it with these festivals, dog. Yeah. And it's it's starting out as this is gonna be your second one, September 9th Hell yeah. In Las Vegas. So, you know, if you're in Las Vegas, get ready September 9th Hell yeah. At the Craig Ranch Regional Park. That's solid. It's going to be a fucking huge-ass fucking show. I'm talking a night to remember. It's going to be an experience, dog. You know what I mean? Hell and, yeah. And, and anybody's welcome to come out there and, and uh, vibe out, you know? You're more than welcome to come out. If you want to come out, let me know. Hell yeah. You know, I'll get you in and shit. Yeah. And uh, so you, got, you guys can experience that because it's, it's dope, dog. Like, the one the, the one we experienced in, in San Diego with that little people, I mean, 3,000 people is a lot of people. But, That's a lot of people. But when you're talking about... 8,000, 10,000 people and all the fucking, the lineup that he has for those people to experience is crazy. That's going to be dope. Yeah, it's and, super and dope. And that's a vision that he's had for years because I remember when he booked me for the couple Latin lockdowns, he was telling me the same thing. He's like, well, yeah. I'm trying to do this. I got this and I got this investor from Texas. And I, I remember the conversations very clearly. And uh, man, to see him doing his thing, you got to give props to yeah. that. I mean, he, and, he's seen it through, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy part is, like, now it's himself. There's no investor involved. Oh, shit. It's just him. That's hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, you know what I mean? And, and that's that, that's making me so proud of him, dog, because it's something that he spoke into reality, and it's not minor, dog. It's fucking huge. Huge shit. I'm talking, he has billboards on the strip. He has billboards on those fucking vans driving around in Vegas and shit, you know, with the, with the electric signs on them and yeah. shit. He, he's going all out. And that keeps the culture alive. That keeps the, the, the hunger for, for hearing the music. And, and it keeps it integrated into the old school with the old school music and the low lows and the, the whole community, homie. So it's actually a genius idea. Props to him for that. Yeah, yeah, Hell definitely. Yeah. yeah, man, I want to say uh, 
I apologize in the beginning when I first started. I still sparked this up. But as respect for the family and, and oh, your you're daughter good. here, oh, stop. So they're, they're used look, to it. I'm like, I'm like, damn, I'm over here shaking and shit. Yeah. I've never went this long nah, without smoking. Man. I'm like, ah, <laughs> the nah, fuck is going on? Nah, they're they're used to it, dog. Oh, okay. We we've been in places where they've been they've been smoked out. Okay. Shit to where my my mom in fucking uh, where was it in Ventura? Yeah, in Ventura, dog. The backs. My mom. I took my mom, my wife. My daughter and shit. <laughs> I'm going crazy. Right? I'm, yeah. seeing, I'm seeing the homie. I'm just seeing double. Right? I'm about to pass that on my face over here. Hey, I'm not G. used to this shit. It was crazy because that night I had I had the whole crowd sing happy birthday to my mom. And That's hard. After that, she was backstage with my wife and my daughter. And it was hot box. I'm talking like a Cheech and Chong concert in the back. Yeah. And they all got so high, they all went to sleep in the cars and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they all got secondhand smoke. And my mom told me, too, she goes, I felt, I felt like I was floating and shit. I was like, yeah, mom, I'm sorry, you know. But they know the get down, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's... It's been it's been like that, and uh, <laughs> uh, you know my daughter knows. Hey Shadow, <laughs> you ever had a moment like that in, during a performance where you're like, "Fuck, fool, I'm too faded. I can't do this shit." Right yes. Now? Yeah. Tell me. Yes. <laughs> Let me know. I want to know. Uh, more than more than once. Okay. So so I I've had it more when I was when I used to drink. Okay. So when I used to drink and then smoke at the same time, I would get sloppy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I would get so fucking stupid, dog, that I would forget my shit and just start fucking. Fucking with the crowd and the my shit's going on in the background. I'm like, you motherfuckers trying to you know, just just trying to fucking play the part like I'm fucking with the crowd, but in reality, I forgot my shit. Got you. You know what I mean? And, and another playing time, it off. And another the second time that I did that. Okay, so check this out. One time, nobody knows this shit, dog. But I'm gonna fucking spill it out right now. So in Bakersfield, we did a car show. After the car show, uh, we had a performance at a club, and somebody. Passed me a blunt, dog. And I fucking smoked it like it was some bomb because it, it was bomb, you know what I mean? I didn't know that shit had fucking... Uh, laced. It was laced with... Um, they call it something else, but... It, so, long story short, it was fucking laced with angel dust. Oh, hell no. So I was fucking... Dog, I had astronaut boots. I was fucking walking... Tripping. Like I was on the moon, dog. So I was sweating, cold sweats and shit. I couldn't even. I, I was I was tripping balls, bro. Like the room was like going like this and like this, and I was like, "Holy shit, please, what the fuck's going on?" And then I got through my show, dog. I only I think I only spit like one or two songs out of like eight or ten, and the the rest I was just like out of it. Yeah, you know what I mean, sweating and fuck. I mean, sweating dog, like crazy. I got off stage and I told the dude that fucking came. I said, dog, what the fuck was in that shit? He goes, angel dust, dog. Did you feel that shit? I, like, <laughs> I said, motherfucker, I'm still feeling that shit. Damn. Right now. Like, yeah, so, <laughs> Did you get pissed? Hell yeah, I got yeah. pissed. Because I almost should have told him, like, dog, I'm about to go on stage. Normally, I'll blaze up, get mine right, so I can rock out, right? Yeah. Come on, dog. You give me something with fucking basically PCP and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was I was watery, dog. I was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I was just not remembering shit, dog. And I felt like a dickhead on stage. I didn't know what was going on. And that was one of the nights that I remember where I actually felt scared, dog, on stage. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, what am I doing up you here? Get that anxiety. Yeah, anxiety. Yeah. Fucking the roller coaster ride. I could barely open my eyes. I was I felt like I was in an astronaut suit and shit floating around and shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I would take a step and it would take me like fucking five seconds to from the top to, to the time I fucking went down and it yeah. was crazy. It was crazy. People noticed it too. They're like, "What the fuck? Are you okay?" They, people were fucking giving me water bottles. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Nah, I'm not okay. I'm fucked up." That's funny. So, yeah, that was one of the times where I was I was scared, homie, because. Some dickhead gave me a blunt with, t with fucking PCP in it. Shit, I have an experience almost similar to that. I was uh, leaving Demenza Studio. I was uh, over there fucking with Damian Young and his crew, Baby Re. And uh, I was shooting videos and recording an album called Evolution of a G at that time. And they booked me for a cannabis event. Shout out to my homie Hashman. That fool does it big. Like, I didn't even know who he was. I wasn't big on, on, on social media like that. And Sad Boy Local, before he was like popping or anything with YG or any of that shit, before he had his deal, I should say. Yeah. Um, his brother was working with them. His name's Lewis in the studio. Remember that for Lewis? Yeah. And he produced for Bone Thugs, TQ, all these cats, right? Yeah. And uh, 
I remember he was like, hey, fool, hashtag wants you to do, uh, hashman wants you to do an event. I follow that fool. He's the truth. He be leaving motherfuckers money all over the city, giving out like pounds of fucking wax and all this. Yeah, this is one like that, wax is that, was big. Is that hashman extract? Yes, sir, my boy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> What's up, Papa? You know how we do it? That's my carnal. You know how we do it? Shout out to his homie, his brother, Cali Carper. You know how we do it. That's family. I know his product. Yeah. And he ain't no joke, right? So let me tell you. Now you're going to really understand that. You're going to understand firsthand. So we're at the event, and he breaks me off racks, homie. I mean, the fool's a baller, right? So good, homie. First time I ever meet him, he gives me a pound of weed. Like like the, the dudes of the truth, right? So yeah. I'm chilling with him. He gave me a pound. He's just like giving me fucking pounds of wax. All my people are just like <laughs> big old smiles and receiving everything. He's like, I don't give a fuck. And the, the dude's just stacking. We're at an event, right? In downtown yeah. LA, right by, by the bridge, right? <laughs> One of those burnt out ass warehouses. You know how they just be raining yeah. out anything, right? And we're right there. And I'm just like, yeah, at the time, I, to this day, I smoke so much. It doesn't affect me like that, right? So I'm just like... <laughs> I'll take anything. Fucking everybody's like always expects you at the events. Like, ooh, criminals high. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what is whom? Yeah. And I remember they gave me this big old joint, and it like kind of went viral back then. It was like that fat hash man, and he was sparking it. He wanted it on camera. His girl was filming it, and him sparking it with the fucking uh, the torch went through that shit like nothing. Give me get that quarter pound joint out of my face. He he rolled a quarter pound joint. And I smoked that shit right. Nothing was affecting me, dog. <laughs> so this booth comes over and says like whispers to my homie like, hey, your boy wants to get high, huh? Have him eat this beef jerky. <laughs> and I say, fuck your beef jerky. I mean, give me that shit. Hum, hum, hum. They're like, oh, yeah, this other product goes like, yeah, we have a, what is that? Oh, this is fucking weed, weed infused root beer. Dun, 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 dun. I start going off. I'm thinking I'm the truth now. I just smoked a fucking quarter pound joint and they do shit to me. Hey, homie, I don't know what happened, but during that event, I started like looking around and I'm like, what the fuck? fuck am I at? What is happening? What's all this cash? Why do I have a gun on me? Why am I... What the fuck? I'm like looking at life different. Like, I never looked at life like that. But this is just my life. I'm normal. Like, what's cracking? This is Mr. Criminal. I'm like, people are recognizing me. I'm like, why are they fucking coming up to me for a picture right now? What is going on? Hey, homie. Hey, dog. Who has my keys? Well, I cut out the fucking event early wow. and I'm in the truck before I got to escalate and I'm in that motherfucker low and leading low so nobody could see me in the event and shit because the fools were walking by the truck like, hey, Kremlin, what's up? Who you coming inside? I'm like, nah, fool, it ain't me. It's a homie. Like, All right? So next thing you know, dog, I swear, the, the event closes and I'm so fucking high, dog. Everybody's leaving. Cars are leaving. I'm the last truck in that parking lot all by myself. <laughs> high as fuck. It's like four in the morning. I don't want to fucking leave. Cops are going by and I'm like, okay, I think it's about time. And then I'm like looking around. I'm like, I got three pounds of weed, two pounds of wax, a gun, three clips, all this shit. I'm like, damn, let me get up out of this bitch. You don't realize that this is your normal life at the time, right? But it's like when you're high and it gets like magnified, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> this is just regular shit to me. Smoke, let's go. Yeah. Grab a pound, get the shit, get the strap. And then, yeah, when you're high, you're looking at everything way different. Like, uh -huh. wow, you're breaking a lot of laws here, sir. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing in downtown LA with all kinds of fucking shit? What the fuck? Ten racks on me. Like, you know, these happy ass cops are going to take everything. So, yeah, that was a moment that I did not like on me at all. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want to experience that ever again. That was an event that they were like, even Hashman cut out and he goes, "Hey, fool, I know you left early, dog, and I'm not tripping. You could keep the rest of the fatty." I'm like, "That weed was good, huh?" And I go, "Nah, fool, it's your homeboy next to you with the fucking bacon uh, beef jerky. <laughs> man. Fuck all that shit, dog." So yeah, some funny shit, dog. But yeah, That's um, crazy. during your during your years and your rise, was there anyone that you ever met that you were like, "Damn, homie," that you were like starstruck, like? You were just like, fuck, I, I, my rap got me here. You know what I'm saying? I know back in the days, Death Row was trying to sign cats. A lot of fools were meeting Suge. I know Easy e I know I seen pictures of fucking Night Out with Easy e back in the day. Yeah, he, he, him and Little One were actually signed to uh, Easy e I did see Little One. Little One looked like he was so young in that fucking they, picture. He was I'm, young. He yeah. was young. They, they got signed as a, as a group called Hollow Point. Hollow Point. <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom, boom. So, Hollow you know Point crazy? coming to get you. What's crazy I remember is, that shit. Easy e when he signed, when he signed them, dog, it's right before you died. Yeah. When he signed them, they actually did a song called "Pet Cemetery" where they did Snoop. Oh shit. Yeah. It never came out. Night Out showed it to me. I was like, dog, you guys were gonna be like in the middle of the shit. Yeah. But unfortunately, Easy passed and shit, and uh, it never came out. Damn, like, I hear too many stories where Chicano rapper, <laughs> the the homies were right there, and somebody made a decision like, let's go this way. Be yeah. real was uh, no, it wasn't be real. Julio G was in the seat the other day, and he was talking about how uh, Snoop he he played on West Side Radio Snoop's Vato before it blew up, and I remember clearly he had Pharrell on it first. It wasn't Be Real. And he was like, I remember that record clearly when Pharrell was on it. Because I remember after Be Real came out, I was like, okay, 
myself, I was like, okay, I see the difference. I see what he's trying to do. I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he had Pharrell on there and sound like he was talking shit, homie. Like bad, right? Yeah. And Julio G said how he played on the radio station. Same thing, like your Christmas trees light up. Yeah. He said that his shit was lit up and he was taking each car. Motherfucker was like, what the fuck did you just play, homie? What the fuck is Snoop <laughs> thinking, dissing us, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it got to that point, right? But I think uh, these DJs, these DJs were in positions to open doors to people and, and change things. Like he said, he told Snoop straight up, hey, homie, get Pharrell off that fucking hood. And put b on this or it's going to be a problem, right? So the fact that we had people on the outside, like the Julio Gs, the people playing the Lisa Vasquez. You said her name was Lisa Vasquez, right? Yeah. We got to give it up to them. But there was a moment where he said on the show, he was like, for Vato, I almost told him to get Little Rob. And when I heard that, I was like, fuck, homie. <laughs> you know how big that shit would have been? You know what I'm saying? Snoop yeah. and Little Rob on a song that Snoop has. Like, there was too many, there was too many moments where a homie could have got on, could have got signed to death row, could have this, could have that, right? But it wasn't our destiny. And yeah. you know what? I'm proud it wasn't. Yeah. Because it birthed the Mr. Criminals that sold millions and millions of records out the trunk. The fucking, the next generations that came, the King Little G's that do the same with streams. Like, we became some of the highest selling rap artists of the West Coast in history. Yeah. And there was a moment where, I don't give a fuck if you were from the Dark Pounds lineage, I don't give a fuck if you weren't Snoop, Dre, or, or, or Game, you weren't outselling me or on or, or my camp. And that yeah. I'm proud of that shit. But oh, that yeah. became because the Mr. Shadows, because the Little Ross, because nobody put us on. We had to get that shit on motherfucking self. Yeah. So I stand on that and I'm proud of that. And shout out to everybody that came before us and birthed this motherfucking thing called Chicano <laughs> Rap because you're looking at a self-made motherfucking millionaire right here. And I say oh, yeah. that humbly. We all we all give people uh, uh, opportunities. And man, it's a beautiful thing, homie, to see. People rise, their stories, their victories, their ups, their downs, their moments where they almost wanted to give up, the moments where they made it huge, and the love that that passes them through all the way through. Because so far, I'm going to keep it real, I ain't had nobody in that seat yet that ain't a legend. Yeah. And you're a motherfucking legend. I Thank give you. you your props. I give you your flowers publicly in front of the whole motherfucking world. Let it be known. Yeah, Mr. Shadow was Mr. Criminal's favorite Chicano rapper of all time. Thank you, my boy. And I'm proud to say that shit. I mean, Appreciate much love, you. much love and respect. I mean, that's how we do it. And I want to ask you, before you get up out of here, what? What's going on? You have a problem? Nobody gave me a bang. I have crack. Chills. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shadow's uh, camera's. Uh, okay. Dead. So let's, let's, let's take quick. two seconds in. Yeah. Cool. I do, baby. I'm uh, fucking hungry, quick. thirsty. Do <laughs> you want me? Uh, you want me to light him up a little bit? You know, I thought that was dope the whole time. What? How he has a shadow in his name, Shadow, that's fool. Come on, that's just hard. That's well, that's not changing now. Mr. Shadow has a shadow. You could change it a little bit if you want. That way we could have a better thumbnail just to end it out. <laughs> well, I'd like to say after giving my homie his flowers, I appreciate you embracing me as a homie in the game. you never been Hollywood. You ain't never been nah. uh, egotistical with me. You ain't never been funny style, nothing like that, and I appreciate it. But you will not escape... What I like to do every single day. <laughs> and now we got the Mr. Criminal Game Show. Hey. 2023, and we got a new contestant in the building. Mr. Shadow from San Diego, 619 yes, is in the house. What's cracking, my boy? What's up? How you doing today, huh? I'm well. I'm doing Man, blessed. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see I see you out here still kicking game to the youngsters and putting motherfuckers in a, a good position to win, homie. So it's a blessed thing, homie. I want to ask you a couple questions. We got our game show. It's not very intense. We try to keep it simple and we try to run through it quick because right. the game show sound is only like 25 seconds. <laughs> I got to press it like 20 fucking times. I can tell you. I'm going to fix that for you one nah, day. It's all good. It's all good. So I want to ask you if it came down to California summertime, San Diego, I think I know the answer, but I ask everybody anyways because mine's winter. Would you rather prefer summertime or wintertime in Kelly? Summertime. Summertime, baby. Where could we find Mr. Shadow in summertime in the 619? What's your favorite spot out there? Fishing. Fishing. Hey. Fishing. On the water with my daughter and my wife. Okay. You go out of H&M? When I do a half-day boat, yeah. Yeah. But I like pure fishing. Oh, shit. You're doing it for real. Yeah. We, we're doing it for real. And we catch a lot of motherfucking fish. And uh, my daughter, she's nine years old. She's an avid fisher. So. Hell yeah. That's love, homie. And, and me and my family, we be fishing too. So, yeah. hey, we got to get on the boat together, go. homie. That'll be love. Let's Hell go. yeah. We, me, you, Exhibit, all the homies that have fish, we'll get together. DJ Pooh, all of us. Let's go. That's how we do it. Hey, um, if you had a choice, would you rather have Super Nintendo or a Sega Genesis? Sega Genesis. What was your favorite game? I would have to say Sonic. Sonic? Hey, which one? One or two? One. 
one. That's the classic one. But the one I don't like, I don't like that one because you, you can't like hit down. They they put the cheat code on number two. You can push yeah. down and yeah. boom. The first one you yeah. try to go back and play, you just jumping all over the place. Like yeah. damn, I can't do that on this one. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Okay, low rider or or a, a foreign whip like a rose or a bandy. Would you rather have a swooped up low rider? Uh, both. Both? <laughs> Hell yeah. One hey, of each. <laughs> you can have each. You know what I'm saying? If you had a choice, though, what Lolo would you rather have? What would be your favorite? You know, I want to get a 6'2 wagon. Ooh, the wagon. The wagon. Those motherfuckers are deadly. Yes, sir. They're very rare. Since I already had the coupe, uh, I want to have a 6'2 wagon. Okay. I like that. And when you get that 6 deuce wagon, let me put that shit in my next video. <laughs> we got a lot of shit sure. to ride to with them Impala <laughs> music, homie. Yeah. We need as much support as we could get. All right, uh, if you had a chance to eliminate one from the culture and you could keep one to represent out of history, just completely, period. No beef, just being real. Someone's got to go. And this is my game show, so I make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and the, and the, any, any genre? Nah, it's Chavez versus De La Hoya. Which one's got to go? Never existed. De La Hoya. De La Hoya. Damn, that DNG see through keeps getting no love. <laughs> Real shit. Sorry. Hey, did you see him on the Garcia and the Tank Davis? Oh, my God, bro. That's... When I saw that flip, it took me back to that time where they said that he was in lingerie and how oh he was. God. It was a saying. Someone had to say it. I didn't. I was trying to be PR and shit. Shadow still shows he don't give a fuck about the radio and all this shit. Nah. He keeps it gutter and hood straight up. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what's this fool thinking? Wearing my wife's shirt out there. <laughs> straight For up. Real. But, hey, it is what it is. Uh, he. I seen the next day they were like, who wore it better, American Cholo or fucking uh, Oscar De La Hoya? Shout out to oh. American Cholo. I think he wore it better. I saw the fucking picture. I was. <laughs> yeah, that's some funny shit, man. That's so this internet's crazy. You see some crazy shit. Hell yeah. NWA or the Death Row era? Which one would you rather have? NWA. NWA was the gangster shit. What's your favorite song from NWA? Uh, of course, fuck the police. Fuck the police. And you know my favorite rapper. He's so underrated, and, and people don't give him his fucking flowers, man. MC Ren. MC Ren was the shit. That's my dude right there, though. That motherfucker is hard. Do you remember the single he dropped in between uh, Easy Dying and Death Row Blowing Up? Which one? Now, who keeps it real? Who yeah. keeps it real? Ren keeps it real. Yeah. Ren in the cut. Oh, Fools, now what's up? That shit was hard, yeah. homie. Fools out faking like they got skills. Yeah. Talk about the problems, Ren. Talk yeah. about, Ren. That shit yeah, was I th- hard. I think Ren is up there with Cube. Underrated for With sure. Cube and everybody else, dog. Claiming Compton, but you moved to Riverside. Hey, <laughs> hey, Ren, we out here, homie. Come pull up, motherfucker. I want to ask you about that shit. What's cracking? Nah, that's love, homie. But yeah. yeah. And then uh, another thing I wanted to ask is... If you had a chance to go back to the old school days, I think you already answered this, so I don't think I'm going to go, but I'm going to do it again. Old school versus physical. Let's just say not the whole era about the money and everything, but actual music. Would you rather have a physical CD in your hand or would you rather be able to just pull it up on iTunes and Spotify? The physical. The physical. Yeah. The because, you know, I, I used to like opening that shit and reading the credits. That's what Exhibit said. And you know what? I could, I could relate to that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was I, I used to like seeing who the fuck was involved. It puts you where, where the artist's mind was at when he was writing those credits, the shout outs and the fucking, and who, who, who he really fucking valued in the process of making that record. Yeah, what, what meant to him, what drove him, what motivated yeah. him. And then the 35 motherfuckers that wrote the song for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, damn, homie, yeah. I didn't know it took this many motherfuckers to make this song, Drake. I don't yeah. know what song I was looking at by Drake, and I was like, damn, there was like yeah. 75 writers in that motherfucker. Yeah. For real, though. Yeah. That shit's and you crazy. know what? The fucking crazy part is that whatever little ass percentage they're getting, they're fucking, they're getting stacked on. Life has changed <laughs> forever. <laughs> they're in the club popping bottles yeah. of rose off that shit right now. Yeah, they're fucking, for one line. They're talking about OVO line. for the rest of their life. That's shit. crazy, homie. <laughs> That's crazy. And, and I got to give shout outs to, uh, to, to the whole West Coast, everybody that's been out here doing it, because we got love for all sides, black and brown, old school, new school, the whole thing. But shit, I have one more question. If you had a choice to pick between Biggie or Pac, which one would it be? It'd have to be Pac. Okay. But Biggie dope as fuck, too. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of have mixed emotions and feelings about his style, because I don't know if you've seen about that... Well, there, he allegedly took the style and the song "Juicy" from this kid, from like ah. the, from the sticks, bro. Like, if you hear the the kid that did it first, and then the one that Biggie did, oh, he stupid, young them. 
Oh, dude, crazy. Yeah. Oh, he's stupid young. Crazy, bro. dog. And it's like, people are like, what the fuck? Yeah, there's an artist out here that steals everybody's shit. His name's Stupid Young. <laughs> you gets no props. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he went, gold, he, yeah. Got, he went gold off of one of my records. Yeah. I should be influencing yeah, everybody, yeah. baby. Go get your millions, homie. Props from Mr. Criminal, Wes. That's right. Yeah. But that's how we do it. Uh, there's a lot of fools that be stealing shit out here. That's, that's very uh, common. They were saying that game... Uh, his son, the documentary was stolen by JT, the bigger figures artist back in the day. So that kind of shit's been going on for yeah. on and on and on. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. All kinds of motherfuckers jacked my style and took my looks and my looks and my <laughs> swags and names of my songs for many years. But I try to say I, I take that as as props because what could you do? Fight fight the fucking wave if you're influencing people. Yeah. Shit, it is what it is. Sometimes it is what though, it is. people just need to give props. Like I'm giving props to you. You know? Imagine I made a song like Bounce Rock Skate Roll and told you that told you that you didn't influence me by that. That'd be a motherfucking lie, right? But right. what did I say when I met you, my boy? Yeah. I said, hey, homie, the song I got that's like this, you influenced that. Didn't I say that? <laughs> yeah. West yeah. Side, homie. I don't yes, have a sir. lot of people that influenced me in my life. All my shit's original. But I remember when I heard that beat, I was like, the first thing that came to my mind was like some old school, like Bounce Rock Skate. And I was like, damn, Shadow already did that, but fuck this shit's hard. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Straight up. It is what it is. Homie. You know what I mean? So yeah. it is. But when I met you, I kept it 1,000 and thorough. You sure and did. I think that's how a motherfucker should be, homie. Because yeah. if you got confidence in yourself, you could tell the next man, like, hey, you influenced me. Me, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because if you wouldn't have done that, I probably would have pulled you to the side after you got off stage. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, hey, let me holler at you real quick, yeah. dog. <laughs> nah, for sure. And, and you know what's dope, though? Is that is that motherfuckers like us could laugh about that and chop it up when other motherfuckers will go to war over it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that definitely. shit's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it didn't take nothing from you. It, it, it just... It gave props to my song, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, and that was a big ass song. That yeah. shit was getting played on Power 106, everything. So, yeah. I don't think that it was tra- it was transparent. It's not like motherfuckers didn't know we're in the same game. Right. You know what I'm saying? But with this other cat, he just did it on some foul shit. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I like to say. Uh, just want to ask you a couple questions. See how everything's going. See how everything's cracking. Um, it's been an honor, homie. Sitting Man, here with pleasure. you, it's a pleasure. Uh, I, I just—it's a definitely a dream come true to be able to have these moments and, and, and talk to legendary artists that I consider really dope, and uh, that actually brought it and, and step and elevated the culture. Moment. So I give you your props. Thank you. Before you go, I want to know what's your top five dead or alive. What, we, what is Mr. Shadow's favorite rappers of all time? Favorite rappers. Yes, so sir. obviously MC Ren is one of them. Hell yeah. MC Ren is one of them. Would you say five or one? MC Ren, I'll probably put at number two. Okay. Uh, number one, I'm going to have to say Crooked Eye. Crooked Eye's a beast. He's an animal. And now I, I see, and now I see your mentality and, and, where you're next. I've had the, the pleasure of meeting him and, and blazing with them and shit and seeing how he works. How he records is fucking outrageous. It's out of this world, dog. Yeah. He, he don't write shit. He goes in there. And he fucking punchline after punchline, dog. It's crazy. Hell yeah. But yeah, Crooked Eye is definitely my number one. Uh, Ren, number two. Uh, number three would be. What the fuck is his name? What's homie from, from uh, Compton that fucking fucked up his throat in a car crash? DLC. DLC. Yeah, he was hard. He was actually from Dallas. Da- he was, was from he? Dallas, yeah. He moved out here from Dallas and, and Easy E hired him to write NWA. Oh, a lot shit. of this shit. Okay, yeah. well, he's my number three. Yeah. Number four would be Scarface. Oh, Scarface is legendary, homie. He don't get his props. Rest in peace. He gets low. Now, Scarface died? Yeah. When? Yeah, he died a couple years ago, three years ago, before Night Owl. Nah, Scarface died off? Yeah, Night Owl was bummed out about it. I didn't know that, homie. I remember he was really skinny and he caught cancer, but I thought he beat it. Yeah. Nah, I didn't know that, homie. That's uh, fucked up. Rest in peace, fucking Scarface. I had no clue, homie. After that, I think Corrupt. The Untouchable album is one of the hardest albums that ever hit. The yeah. one where he's sitting there with the with the mafia look with the gangster hat and he's yeah. like, oh, yeah. with the cigar. Yeah, that's super hard. That's on the South Side. Yeah. The South, South Side. Oh, that yeah. shit is hard, homie. But yeah. you said, who was last, Corrupt? Corrupt. All uh, right, and you got to work with him. Yeah. yeah, yeah did yeah, you have a chance to tell cool. him? Yeah. Yeah, you did tell yeah, him. Corrupt's dope. Yeah. I was gonna say if you didn't, you didn't keep it real like criminal kept it real with nah. you, homie. Come on, we're gonna call Corrupt right now. Hey, hey, Gotti, <laughs> Shadow said you're yeah. one of his favorites. Now Corrupt's a real motherfucker too, though. And I'll put Roscoe right there with Corrupt because Roscoe's a fucking. He's a spitter. Yeah, he's a super spitter. Hey, dude. that 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 uh, click that he brought to the game, 
I was really excited about him that uh, YA Youth Authority. Yeah. <laughs> Bizzle and all them cats yeah. he had together. Whoa, man, the motherfuckers were hard. I remember he had a that song at the end of uh, his album. If you were rider, homie, let's yeah. roll. And all them fools. I'm a hereditary, hereditary, and necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like a commissary. Yeah, it's necessary. Spitters. Them fools were so sick. Hot I was spitters. like, damn, these fools were fucking with it, homie. Yeah. I don't know, like shit like that. Do you think like a... Uh, Groups like that or artists like that get in their own way because they're caught up in the street life or you think they were, like, overlooked and not had that love or, or, or they just didn't push themselves? Yeah. It was that? Yeah. Yeah. That sucks, Holmes. You see a lot of artists do that, man, and it sucks because you just sit here and think, like, damn, what would have happened if, you know what I'm saying? Like, these motherfuckers yeah. could have been legendary. They could have been the ones that took even past it, past Snoop, past Dre, but, it, hey, it wasn't the destiny. You know who else don't get his flowers, darn? He's super old. Well, he was super dope, but still super dope. It's OG Domino. Domino from back in the days yes, when I was sir. young. I'm not a kid anymore. That's, that's yeah, a real good, real good homie, dog. Like, is we, that right? We you talk, know him? We, yeah, we talk a couple. Oh, like, that's hard. We talk a lot, and uh, I got to give him his flowers, dog, because, you know, I, I like his shit a lot. And uh, I got him on a couple records, but we're, we're going to be doing a whole EP together. You know, my, my connection to Domino is pretty dope, and I thought it was dope when I first got in the record, rap game. So DJ Favor, but a lot of shit of Brown, right. he was like one of the original members. He's the one that originally produced Latin Active. It right. wasn't Jammin' James. It was after he left the group, they put him on. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> see, I, I'm slick. I asked ODM <laughs> on the show, and I acted like I didn't know, but I know the truth. Faye's a homie, right? <laughs> right. So, so uh, I just want to see what ODM say, say. You see what I'm saying? I'm checking. I'm testing the waters at all times. So <laughs> you know how it goes. Now, shout out to ODM. I talked to him this morning, man. Get better, homie. I hope you feel good, homie. And uh, nah, but uh, he was saying how how back in the days, Domino was the first one that gave him an MPC and taught him and put put him in the studio and showed him how to stack and make the beats and all that shit and elevate it. So when we were, we were making the beat, I was like, yeah, he showed you. He's like, yeah, on this MCPC right here. And my, my shit was looping. I remember I was uh, recording a song called Stay on the Streets. Um, and I was like, damn, homie, this fool produced that shit on this. He's like, yeah, yeah. on this right here, fool, what the fuck? What's the big deal? You know, yeah. and I'm like a kid in the game, like, oh, my God, my beats are on the same fucking shit as Domino's. Like, it fucked my head up, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're, we're about to do an EP. He's Is that gonna, right? He's going to produce two or three records on it. Hell yeah, I'm crying family entertainment. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, oh, damn, look, I hit the right thing, look. I, I, the record stopped on me. Damn. All right. This shadow interview is over. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. But nah, that's a beautiful thing to see. So you got Domino up in there too. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's that's that's. Hey, love, maybe you could get him on here, dog. Hell yeah. Hey, absolutely, homie. That'll be, that'll be some love. Hey, so so if you could give props to one, because I haven't asked nobody this, because I haven't really had nobody in the seat that come from a legendary point of view. Uh, a lot of the cats that have been here, like the Dopies, the King Little G's, I haven't had nobody that's been in this motherfucker as long as you. Um, who would you say from San Diego, from your city, representing your soil, has done it or that you give props to or you could say, damn, this motherfucker's actually doing it or they still, you haven't seen nobody doing it yet with brown skin? I think, <clears throat> I think Little Weirdo. I think he's hard too. I think Little Weirdo, he's the little bro. Uh, we just we just brought him out to perform at the SoCal Taco Fest. Yeah. 9,000 people there. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he redid one of my joints, Excited. He flipped it and, and, and did it his way. Yeah. And it came out dope. Yeah. He um, pays homage. Yeah. He showed me love in, on one of his verses. He says, the maniac in black always on the attack. I was like, oh, shit, little homie repping, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, there's other cats like little Maru, you know what I mean, doing his thing. But I think, I think even though Maru got his distribution deal and everything, I think Weirdo on the independent tip is doing and surpassing other artists and shit and then. And, more props to him, you know what I yeah. mean? He's he's super humble, super you know, he's a super dope person, dog, and you know, I can't can't hate on him, man. He's he's doing his thing, dog, and he's 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 different. Yeah, he his is. style is different. He's not trying to be like anybody else. Yeah. He's doing his own thing his own way and I respect him for that. Man, it tripped me out. He would hit me up. He was like, man, my mom used to bump your shit my whole life. Yeah. Like, my mom's a fan. My sister's a fan. Yeah. Like, yeah. fuck, criminal. <laughs> like, we fuck with you, homie. And I, yeah. I hit him up, and I told him I want to do an interview when we first started this podcast. And he was like, to be real with you, Kramer, I don't do all interviews. I don't fuck with them. I don't, I don't like them. I'm not, I, don't, I just ain't feeling them. 
Like, I don't fuck with it. Yeah. But if you're calling me, I'm going to pull up on the quickness. Like, yeah. And then he told me that uh, he was like, I've been kind of dismotivated. I'm like, nah, homie, you you, you doing that. Like, you need to fuck that. That's yeah. part of the game. You you hit these road bumps, you keep coming. He goes, this is exactly what you told me. He goes, hey, I seen the picture you posted with bro. And it was the day I posted the picture with King Little D. He goes, low key, that shit made me want to come out swinging. Like, <laughs> so it, the, the fact that we still, still, still influencing the youth. Yeah. That shit still makes me feel good. Like, man, that, that, we're doing something right out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if we can make definitely. a little homie that was going to give up with brown skin and not give up. I, I can't say that. He did not say that. He just said he wasn't really feeling it lately. And yeah. you know, I'm like, oh, I'm not really feeling the game. Like, fuck the game. Like, I'm not yeah. even on no rap shit. I'm on some other shit, you know? Yeah. And he's like, but seeing that picture made me want to get back in the studio quick. You know? So, yeah. that's that's love. I mean, we still doing it. We still carrying these torches, you know? Yeah, we, like, we, we, got a, we got a joint that we did, me, him, and Little One. Yeah? Yeah. What about that criminal <clears throat> and, and shadow joint on God Got Me? Whenever you want. Oh, it's critical. Well, we put him on blast and he's with it. <laughs> I need that. This uh, is a legendary wait, album. We got it. King Little G. We got Frankie J, Baby Bash, uh, Zoe Osama, um, Be Real. Fucking, uh, fuck, it's been crazy. It's been you crazy. Got, you so, got Frankie and Bash on the same song? On the same song. That song, that's like when I did Menage a Trois with them. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't it, know It that. was a Baby, uh, Baby Bash song. It was um, Frankie J on the hook. Yeah, the song's called Menage It Trump. wasn't even supposed to come out like that, I swear. I hit Baby Bash one day, he was supposed to get on my record, and I was in the studio with the homie Jay. He worked with, like, Shaka Khan, all kinds of people. He called produced my record with Wiz Khalifa. And he's like, you know what? I think Baby Bash would sound dope on this. It was his idea. Yeah. And he's like, man, maybe you could one day get at Baby Bash. I'm like, one day? That's the homie's... Bash, <laughs> I'm in the studio for I'm gonna send you this record. He goes, Hey, I'm in the studio with Frankie J right now. I'm cutting the record. Send it to me and let me see what's up if I have a little bit of time. I sent it to him and he goes, Frankie J loved that shit when they played it in here. He goes, We both jumped on it. He nice. sent it back and he goes, That's for criminal? Send this shit. Nice. I go, Fuck. So they sent it back and I had it. So I was like, Man, I had it. We've been sitting on that song for probably like five, six years. And it just oh. wasn't the right time. So right. the fact that I got all these cats on this record, I haven't really had an album with features in a long time. Yeah. So I can't have all these motherfuckers on my album without no Mr. Shadow. Homie. Let's get it. So that's there it is. We're about to turn this shit off. We're going to go pick <laughs> a beat, and we're going to send the homie home with a hot-ass track so we could jump on for God Got Me. Yes, but sir. That's how we do it. Or or if he spits quick, we could do it right now on the motherfucking spot, homie. Shit, is a choice of either, either or. Either or. But yeah, that's how we do it. God bless the homie Shadow. I appreciate everybody. It's uh, Mother's Day weekend pulling up. We've been really live and at it. We recorded a couple uh, podcast pre-recorded this week We did some live ones And we're just stacking homie We're just doing it non-stop I appreciate uh, you pulling through And yeah. sharing your story And uh, yeah that's how we do it Before we get up out of here I respect everybody's religions Everybody's beliefs But I always gotta give it up to my creator And keep it real and organic with myself Cause that's the way I roll Yes sir Father God, I come to you tonight to thank you for another blessed episode, another blessed week. We've been killing it. We've been doing nothing but numbers. We've been doing nothing but support, bringing this positivity, having people come over all over the world, telling us that they appreciate what we're doing, squashing beasts, creating positivity, creating a narrative that people could follow for success. And we thank you for our brother Shadow pulling up tonight and giving his testimony again of, of struggle to victory and... Uh, it's just been a beautiful night, beautiful week. It's, it's Mother's Day. Please bless all the mothers out there. Bless every subscriber. Please bless every supporter that supports every single one of us. Shout out to the whole team. Shout out to the whole label, our whole family. And that's how we do it. God bless. Amen. Hell yeah. Well, that's it. 2023, we got Mr. Shadow in the motherfucking building. Anything you want to say before we do? Just thank you to all my supporters. Hell yeah. I got some shit brewing. Obviously, now we're doing a song on Criminals. So Hell yeah. Be on the lookout. You know what I'm saying? And... uh Shout out to my bro Uno, man. And if you're in Vegas, come out September 9th, Craig Ranch uh, Park. You won't want to miss this fucking festival. Hell yeah. Shout out, shout out, little one, man. Me and my homeboys used to bump that. It's a Saturday, yeah. <laughs> Rolling with the homies. That's how we do it, man. We're going to keep on giving flowers because that's what we're supposed to do. We're breaking the norm. Fuck the bullshit. Let's give flowers. Let's stand together. Kings, bosses, with, with these numbers together, homie, we could take over. Ain't nothing yes, fucking sir. with us, homie. Nothing. That's how it goes, homie. Much love and respect from your homeboy, Mr. Criminal, on air live. Another episode in the motherfucking mix. Let's go.